Saturday, 905 to the PM, 86. 2012. Donnie Gilson right here on 32 Degrees of Insanity. Welcome to the show. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to listen to the special edition of 32 Degrees on Saturday on Truth Frequency Radio, uh, we kind of dabbled a little bit on last Wednesday night's show. Of course, if you didn't listen to last Wednesday night's show, it is up on YouTube right now. And this is where Alfred Lambert Weber and I uh, discuss the CIA operative, the CIA Pentagon operative, named Zachariah Stitchin, who came up with this incredible story of a planet called Nibiru uh, that was uh, supposed to be the, the planet that was outlined in the Sumerian text uh, that uh, has now been confirmed by Inside Pentagon Source to be a hoax. Now, over the last week, we have been hearing a lot of people going, well, Donnie, you say you found Nibiru. What happened? Why are you changing your, 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 your changing? Why are you flip-flopping on this? Well, I'm not. I'm just needing to call it for what it is. And Nibiru is not it. The actual thing that we are talking about is a dual sun, a binary star system. And I believe that what is with that binary star is a planet called Herculobus, the red planet. Now, the Gnostics have talked about this many, many years, for, 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 for centuries. I think what we need to do, and one thing that Alfred had talked about, is as this, this binary star comes in, this dual sun comes in, we need to be calling it by its rightful name. Because if it all has consciousness, and which Alfred, you know, basically stated, you know, we need we need to take some time for meditation, kick back, and instead of this being a dual sun, D U E L, like a dueling, it's a dual sun, a companion star that'll come in and not be a bully, but come in and not cause havoc, and that we can go down this 2012-2013 positive timeline. So what we have shown you, and what I have shown you in all my videos, seems to be in fact a dark star. And that is what I've been tracking. I have been tracking this second star. It's still there. Don't, don't get me wrong, guys. But we need to be calling it by its rightful name, and that is called Herculobus. Not Nibiru. Nibiru is a hoax. Nibiru is a psyop. You want to continue calling it Nibiru, whatever. That's fine. You know, who cares what it's called? Really. But I think if this thing has consciousness, and if it's possible that psychological operation by the U.S. government as you know, that I have stated before, that one of the uh, that the actually the director of defense ministry or a, a, a director of defense stated back in two. Th uh, let's see here if I can find that information here. Let me go to my Facebook, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read this quote to you because I I have read it to you guys before, but I want I I, I want this to really sink in because I I I do not I'm starting to believe that we are heading down a very positive timeline. Now, I've spoken to some people over the weekend that are agreeing with me on this, that we are heading down a positive timeline, that these so-called, you know, evildoers, or whatever you want to call them, are failing on every front. They're trying to start mass panic, so we have information coming out from John Moore. We've got information coming out from Dr. Deagle. Now, you guys remember, before any of this came out, that I had the NASA Insider stating to me, and I'm going to re read a article here, and then we'll go back into what I was going to what I was going to read. But remember what I wrote on June eighth: first real images of Planet X super system. Remember what I said? First real images of Planet X super system. Didn't call it Nibiru. 
I call it the Nibiru system equals ISS ELC 20049-DNY. I renamed it. So even back then, I was telling you guys unconsciously that Nibiru, well, let's talk about a system, not a planet. So actually, in fact, I was actually some, somehow within myself already telling myself that this was not the same thing Zacharias Ditchin had been telling us all along. That in fact it was a large system. Because everything pointed to that. Because here it was, I was tracking this thing, and I, you know, I, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this doesn't look like it's in a, it looks like two different systems. Some have said that there are two stars out there that I've talked to, including our sun. Which would make a lot of sense in the Trinity type of thought process. The Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus. The try, try system. And that to me, remember when I talked about those three weird stars that look like the three wise men down in, uh, down, well, so it, to me, what I've been tracking and I'm going back deeper into into my old research because originally before I really started going into Nibiru, I was speaking about Herculobus. That's what I wanted to call it way before I went into the Nibiru, but in Nibiru was a little bit easier. People understood what that was, you know. But we need to veer away from that. We need to get away from Nibiru. It's a hoax. The beer of the story. I'm not saying. I'm not saying people are trying to twist my words around. Saying that the whole thing is a hoax. No. No, 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 no. Not at all. And in fact, we have much more things out there that we have no idea what they are. None. And how is it affecting our inner system and our, 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 our outer solar system? We, we know that even a mini galaxy is somehow morphing into the Milky Way. We also know that we have different levels of extraterrestrial technology out there. You know, are we a type 1, type 2, type 3 civilization? Do you think that a type 3 civilization that might be part of this Herculobus star system, binary sun system, that they can't somehow create this thing under intelligent control? And that if we somehow raise our consciousness, our vibration so that it is not destructive this time around. That we could change humanity. And that's what I'm preaching. I'm not going to go down the lines of saying that, you know, I might have at one point said, you know what, we should, you know, we should be careful. You know, this binary star could, you know, engulf the earth. It could, you know, it could. Guys, I'm not saying that it can't. A lot of people are very, very concerned about what they're hearing from Dr. Deagle, they're hearing from John Moore, they're hearing from me, they're hearing from Arizona, they're hearing from, you know, different other sources. About this particular system that's supposed to roll in on August 17th. Now, if we remember correctly, on June 8th, what did I write? First real images of Planet X Supersystem, the official public release of the heavy mass object that has been suppressed by NASA. That's what I wrote back on, back in June. And what did I say? Over the past few days, I have released many videos at my website, www.ursuadams, and I am confident that there are two opposing forces on each side of the galactic plane which are pulling on one another and could cause a possible merge together as soon as, and I say, as soon as August 21st, 2012. 
In a recent conversation with a NASA insider, I have learned that the NASA has been, has made a huge mistake in regards to the recent. Well, I, I talk about the recent transit at that time too, or the Venus transit. Now I don't know if that NASA insider is legit or not. He actually contacted me and said that, oh, I'm twisting his words around saying that Nibiru is some sort of uh, uh, ship. Well, I've said that all along. I believe the same thing Bob Dean does. I think that Nibiru, Nibiru is a Vamana. If we want to really go down to what a Nibiru is, if we want to call it Nibiru, but I'm, you know, that's a Vamana. That's a completely different thing. That is something that is a ship under intelligent control. Could be where the Anunnaki are. That we'll call that Nibiru. Okay? Should we be very specific now? On what we're calling is what is what is what? So that the debunkers don't get all freaking frustrated? Or can we start all working together and know that something is wrong with this world? Something is wrong out there in the galactic plane. Something is very, very, very wrong. And we're feeling it inside our bodies, down to our DNA, of our bodies to our soul. We know something's wrong. And we need to change it. It, it, it's 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 frustrating, you know. As a person that you know, I I have been doing this now. This is my year anniversary here on FreedomizerRadio.com, and I am you know very privileged, you know, that I have gone through so many ups and downs with this. But all I'm trying to do, guys, is find out the truth for myself, so that I'm prepared. I'm just communicating what I find. And I believe that the Nibiru, the Nibiru, the so-called planet Nibiru, created by Zachariah Stitchin, is a hoax. Yes, it is a hoax. That's what I believe. I trust Alfred Weber. I have no reason to doubt Alfred. He hasn't let me down yet. But then all of a sudden, all these, you know, military ex-Vietnam vets and all these things, you know, coming out of the woodwork, talking about it August 17th, August 28th, or uh, October 28th, flyby. Even Carol is saying these guys are off the rockers. That they're completely taking out the information. No wonder why we're not, Carol and I are no that are not included in their little clicks. You know? I might not agree one hundred percent with Carol and I you know, he's saying he's in the Ozarks and you know, he's ready and prepared and going, you know. Well, he might be ready for that 2012-2013 catastrophic timeline because he wants to go down that catastrophic timeline. I don't. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go down that timeline. I pray every day that we will have a positive timeline. And now we have this... this, this um, Shooting in Wisconsin again, another another massacre at a temple. And one of the fathers of one of the main UFO guys that's doing the serious documentary was killed. And Alex Jones gets out there, and he doesn't even talk about that. Why is he so scared to bring up UFO disclosure? Why is he so scared to ta not talk about about this, well, just, we'll just call it a second son, a dual son. How's that sound? Easy. We'll just call it dual son. Why is he so scared? Why doesn't he talk about that? He'll talk about, you go into the FEMA camps, and you're going to do this, and you're going to go to that, and the Constitution, and blah, 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 blah. Fear-mongering. I'll admit, I fell subject to that as well. But now I have a right to change, just like all of us do. I have a right to, to 
take a look at what I have talked about in the past and reanalyze everything that I've talked about to make it fit into my reality. I don't care about yours. You can go whatever timeline you want. As I've always said, you got a choice. Go down the path of love or go down the path of destruction. It's your choice. Now, Arizona would probably disagree with me. Arizona would say, well, the Lord has told me this. And you know what? The Lord is right. But the Lord also did say something else that we would, that, that, that the ones that believe in the Lord will be taken away or swept away. So could that have been this different positive timeline that the Lord spoke about? I don't know. I'm just guessing. No one knows anything. We can all guess. This is our best guesstimation. You know? I even picked up the phone and called Brian Marshall Golightly this weekend. And him and I have come to a consensus that yes, this is true. That you know, this is the return of Gabriel. Now, as I've said before, I don't know if, if Brian Golightly's God or not. You know, I don't know, and and I really don't care. All I know is that we're all seeking the truth, and what Brian and, Kama and I came up with, that yes, there is a binary sun coming in, and it's about one-twentieth of the size of the sun, which calculates up to what I've shown you guys when I've used the welder's glasses. It looks about one-twentieth the size of the sun. So it's a smaller sun. It's a bully, and it's got a system with it. And that system is the Herculobus red planet system. Now, I will be teaming up with the Eagle Foundation. If you're not familiar with the Eagle Foundation, I would uh, I, I would Google them. Uh, we are going to be talking about their book that was written, uh, and we're going to be talking about their stuff here. Oh, oh man, what's going on here? Okay. I hate it when my computer freezes. Uh, we're going to be talking about their stuff. The Eagle Foundation is a UK-based nonprofit organization run by unpaid volunteers who carry out various cultural educational projects based around the book Herculobus or Red Planet by author B. M. Rabelou. The program developed by uh, forms are part of an international project, a book for all, which is currently taking place in Italy, Spain. Greece, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, uh, Paraguay, and many other Latin uh, American countries. They are an independent legal institution registered with Companies House and have no links to any political or religious organizations. Their goal is to encourage change for the benefit of our planet, society, and the individual. Now, later on in the broadcast tonight, I'm going to be talking, and we're going to kind of go into some of the, some of the stuff about this book. But I will be having one of the key members of the Eagle Foundation hopefully joining me on the air within the next week or so, two weeks or so, to talk about this more in detail. Because this book kind of gives us a, a choice as well, I, I believe. I haven't read it all yet, but it, from what I have gathered from it so far, it looks as though it, 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 it has... Um, that it has uh, a what's the word I'm looking for it has a sense of hope for humanity and I like what I read here doesn't this totally sound this is somebody in the, in the chat room I just banned them, and I hope they hope they listen to it. He goes, doesn't this totally sound like he didn't raise enough donations, so he has to backtrack and come up with another fear-mongering scheme that he has to open everyone's eyes to, and it really needs your money so he can concentrate full-time on his research. If I ask you for a dollar, guys, I haven't asked for a dollar in a long time. 
I don't ask for any money on my radio show. Hell, last time I asked for a donation, it was a donation to help a young lady. I'd rather you put your money somewhere else than to give it to me. All I want for humanity is the truth. And I want the truth for myself, too, because I need to I need to find my own truth. And if you don't like what I have to say, then you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to troll my channel. You don't have to troll my chat rooms. You don't have to create videos. You don't have to do all this because I'm not the only one in the world that's talking about this. Hell, now I see even John Moore is being attacked by these so-called trolls. That, oh, well, John Moore is just trying to sell his survival kits and all that stuff. Well, you know what? Maybe John Moore, his destiny is to head down this catastrophic timeline. Maybe that's his destiny. And I can't judge him for that destiny. I can't judge you for your destiny. And if you tend to not listen to any of this or tend to troll me or, or try to call me out or anything like that, well, then you are picking your own destiny. You are picking the destiny to ignore. So where that leads you in the timetable, I don't know. Maybe you'll hang out with me. Maybe you'll hang out with John Moore. I don't know. All I'm giving you is a choice. So you come on to my chat room, I'm going to ban you. You come into my YouTube channel, I'm going to ban you. Yeah. I have no problems doing that. Because I am going to preach as much as I can, as many people as I can, to tell you the one thing that you need to remember is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's really all that matters. We can talk about these stars and dwarf planets and binary sun systems and all that crap until we bl go blue in the, spa in the face. But the underlining message, the underlining message, and I'll put the, uh, uh, it's it's not yeah, too many bald eagle, uh, the Eagle Foundation site, um, people are asking me uh, for that. So I will put that in the chat room. And if you guys are, are uh, listening uh, in the archives, uh, it is just the eaglefoundation.cu.uk. Uh, and I will put that in the chat room for everybody. Uh, and that's right. It says, you know, somebody in my in my chat room just says, not saying Donnie is one, but remember what Jesus said, beware of false prophets. I have never said I'm a prophet, ever. And I love how people take that time I said back, what it was, back to Flax or whatever his name is. I'm like, I'm like, I'm God. I'm God. You think I was doing that to say that I'm God? No, I was being very sarcastic. And anybody that knows me knows how sarcastic I am. Because we had Brian go lightly on, says he's God. Terrell said he's God. So I might as well, I might as well jump on the bandwagon and say I'm God too. No. Not a prophet. I'm not Christ. I'm not God. I'm just Donnie Gelson trying to figure out his own truth on his own radio show. Yeah, you know, just because I have a microphone. See, this is the thing. You know what? I don't hide behind anything. You know, I don't hide at all. Everybody knows my name. Everybody knows my full name now. Everybody knows when I was born. Everybody thinks, knows my, you know. I don't hide anything. If I'm going to tell you I got an informant, well, I'll tell you who the informant is. That's an informant. Alfred Weber's my, my you know. I'm going to tell you where I get my information from. But yet I'm the Go to guy. Oh, Donnie Gilson, watch out. But now Donnie Gilson says Debiru's a hoax. So now we're going to totally call him on all of his research that he's done and said now that he's raising all the donations, blah, 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 blah. Whatever. We know that something's out there. We know that something is perturbing this planet. We know 
penny is, what would cause a 97% increase in, or a decrease in the uh, uh, Greenland ice sheet? Is that normal? No, it's not normal. What is causing the Great Lakes to be at the highest temperatures they have ever been in recorded history? We have fish dying because they can't get enough pH balance in the in, in, in and and to roam in, in areas of the lakes that the, the fish are dying. We have red, weird red type of fungi showing up in rivers all over the United States, Arkansas to be specific, even all throughout the country. You know, we've seen blood red moons. We've seen all of these signs. All of these signs. So, what is it? What's causing all of it? Well, it makes pretty logical sense to me, you know, that you know no one has been able to touch on. And here's the, here's the one thing that I want anybody to tell me about is that okay, we have Venus. Let's talk about Venus for a second here. We have Venus that was years ago. You know, I guess there's a light ratio or something like that. I forget how how it's done. But, you know, Venus was at a light ratio of 1, like, 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. But now, Venus is, like, at a light ratio of 4 or 5 or something like that. I mean, it's very bright in the sky. It looks almost like a comet in the sky now. It's weird. It looks like it's got a tail on it. What would be causing all of this brightness? Why are all the other stars getting so bright? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If something went supernova, or even hypernova, do you think we would know about it right now? No, the light would be catching up to us. You think our our eyes are the are the factual all of, of anything? Here, here is human existence that can't even walk through a desert without seeing mirages. Do you know how many, how many times has our, our minds played tricks on us? Our eyes played tricks on us. But yet, we say, well, if we can't see it with the real eyes, it doesn't really exist. Well, I showed you the pictures of uh, the Melbourne, Australia. How about this thought, guys? How about this is interdimensional? How about how about we are seeing the multiverse? We're getting glimpses of the multiverse. Or we're seeing timelines that are taking place at different levels. That actually I'm on a different timeline than you are, and you are on a different timeline than she is, and we're all seeing different stuff. You know how my mind works? No. Do I know how your mind works? No. Are we all God? No. Are we even close to God? Not even close. Does God exist? I don't know. I hope so. I have faith in God. I have faith that there's, you know, you know, I've read, you know, stories of this being in the abyss, dream state. But who knows, maybe we have small universes inside our own bodies. Hell, we don't even know how our DNA is, 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 we don't even, we, we can't even tell, we can't even figure out how we work, let alone how the universe works, or let alone the oceans, we don't even know what's going on in the oceans. And you want to tell me that there's no such thing as, as a, a second sun? You don't know, and neither do I. All I can do is try to figure it out the best that I can for my own, and I'll share it with you. But I don't deserve to be attacked. You don't see them going out and attacking John Moore or Lucas or any of those guys. Oh, no, we have a Green Beret that says that uh, the, we're going to have a pole shift, a 50% pole shift on August 17th. 
You've been warned, get off the coastlines. And now everybody's talking to his every word. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I'm spiritually ready. I'm good with my God. If I die, I die. If, you, if we're not here on August 17th or August 21st, I hope you all had a good life. I hope we all had a good life. But if we are here, then we have another flyby on October 28th, another thing to look out for. And then we talk about the three days of darkness, which Princess Nakamura talks about on August, on uh, December 21st, 22nd, 23rd, which Brian and I, and even Chris Gio, and a lot of us believe that is a black hole that we just cannot see. It's in the interdimensional plane. That's the dark rift that even Kerry Cassidy mentioned. I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, I, I was reading today, you know, I, was, I just kind of Googled Donnie Gilson, John Moore. And I guess there's rumors that John Moore and I are talking. I haven't talked to John Moore. I have no, I, I've never talked to the man. So, spouch those rumors. That I'm his confidential informant. No, not his confidential informant. You know, I mean, I want to go into, um, you know, and I, I know there's some people in uh, uh, that are listening that have called in. Uh, I know you're there, Jay Larson. Uh, we'll bring you on second hour here. Just getting some stuff off my chest here first. Uh, if you want to call in, speak to us, 347-324-3704. Again, that's 347-324-3704. All you have to do is hit the number one sign and your hand will go up, and I know you're there. Uh, I'll bring people on second hour. Um, you know, I'm looking, you know, I want, I want to read this. And this was something that I... Um, posted back on January 25th, 2011. It says, The story behind Herculobus and the Seven Races. I'm going to read this for you guys. Because someone today goes to me, and she writes this wonderful thing to me. Uh, she goes, Donnie, let me just say this is an amazing piece of truth to the T. You manage to uh, encapsulate the information in such a straightforward, easy-to-understand manner that I would be honored to have your permission to post this on my wall. The friends, uh, the friends I keep on Facebook are people I know, love, and respect. I've been trying to express my spiritual belief structure in regards to science, astronomy, astrology, physics, and in regards to, yeah, the Gospels, and how they coincide and go hand-in-hand -hand with one another. Because I speak my truth, and by the light of God, I live my truth. I share the truth in hopes that everyone I care about will see God's truth. I post different things in different ways in hopes that I can help just one person, if not many, awaken to the Lord's truth so that they, can shall, that, that they too shall be saved. I never had faith like that, like I have. In fact, I was an atheist because until science could give me some solid proof I couldn't be convinced. When I stumbled upon your radio show and your YouTube channel in the spring of 2011, I remembered how much I loved the cosmic science and began researching things myself, through books, the Internet, and my own observations in the sky. When Element came about, I woke up one morning as if it had hit me with the god stick. The, unbelie uh, the unbeliever I was set out to prove this ever-so-powerful God force of love, lighting, and understanding. And about two months ago, my science research, while well, historical facts and science proved God, my shallow belief in God and misinterpretation message of Christ are now set straight in my heart. Your words have, uh, have, uh, your words have the simplicity to explain something I've been trying to say all along. My words get lost in too much detail. You are freaking brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate it. And your permission would be, and I would love to re repost this. Now, what I'm about ready to read to you is I did not write this. This was actually uh, written by a colleague of mine uh, back in 2010 when I really started kind of really going into research. But I thought it was absolutely amazing uh, information. 
and I think it really does. Uh, what uh, what she had written to me is, in fact, uh, this is the the truth. And I, I'm going to be going down this 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 thought process from here on out. We're going to be discussing a little later on in the show. We are going to be discussing uh, Alfred Weber's new article, uh, his new summary in regards to what we spoke about on Wednesday night's show. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some areas that I want to start investigating um, because I do believe that we have intelligent life form out there in the universe. And I saw something recently, and I'm going to get into this in a second here, but I, I, you know me, I always go off on a little tangents. Um, I saw something recently about extraterrestrials and how we, of all the billions of galaxies in, in, in the universe, and even in the multiverse that uh, we've spoken about in several different aspects, that we're kind of arrogant to think that if extraterrestrials are out there, they would know about us, but yet we might not know about them. Well, that's kind of untrue. Because there could be extraterrestrial life out there that has no idea about us. Because think about it, guys. Think of it, think of, think of uh, a sidewalk, all right? And we have several anthills all over the sidewalks, okay? We got one all the way down by the stoplight, and we got one all the way down there by that stoplight, and then we have another anthill right underneath us. Now, do you think those ants, that we know where every single anthill is, No, we don't. We have no idea. We actually have no idea where those ants actually go. We don't have any idea. So what makes us think that we that 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 we can actually pinpoint some extraterrestrials and they can actually pinpoint us? That they can find us in the maze of the so called universe as well. No. We're arrogant to think that. That we're some sort of special race, you know? No. And that's why when I read this a long time ago, it it uh, it hit me hardcore. Here, I'm going to read this, uh, and then we're going to go into a break here. The story behind Herculobus: The Seven Races, presented by Donnie Gilson. The subject of Gnostic anthropology explores the history of our planet Earth and describes in detail the civilizations that inhabit the Earth in the past and that will inhabit the Earth in the future. Gnostic anthropology is radically different than what a present-day historical anthropo anthropolo anthropological and archaeological archeo texts teach us and is best studied with an open mind and with the help of the inner meditation. A study of Gnostic anthropology will enable us to see more clearly where our present civilization stands as well as where we personally stand with respect to overall history of the planet. History repeats itself. It's a profound statement, not only because the social and political incidents seem to reoccur, but because large cosmic cycles and events also repeat themselves. These major cycles determine the final destiny of humanity, and by understanding them, we are able to grasp where our civilization is headed. And with that being said, I'm going to go into a quick break here. We're going to come back right here on 32 Degrees of Insanity. Uh, if you're listening to us on Blog Talk, please join us over at freedomizerradio.com. And I'll finish that off right after this break. You know the Constitution like the back of your hand. You've read books, listened to podcasts, attended lectures, surfed websites, and watched videos. You've made liberty your life's goal, but something seems to be missing. Stickers from LibertyStickers.com. Exercise your freedom of speech with the world's most dangerous bumper stickers. That's LibertyStickers.com. But wait. 
There's more. You can buy Liberty Snickers wholesale. Get them for 99 cents each when you put 100 or more in your shopping cart in any combination. Sell them or give them away. They're great for gun shows, flea markets, fairs, outreach, and more. Earn extra money, promote freedom, and spread the word. Need custom stickers, labels, or decals for your organization or business? Liberty Stickers makes them. Go to libertystickers.com to order or call 877-873-9626. Libertystickers.com, the world's most dangerous stickers. Ay, 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 leche pa' cabra, ¿por qué? Are you tired of losing your herd of goats to the chupacabra? Are you worried about how you're going to eat because your goats were viciously ravaged? Call SNL Chupacabra Insurance today. SNL provides fast, speedy claims in the event of your goat farm being destroyed. Low rates, fast service, and professional attitude is what makes <coughs> SNL your choice for Chupacabra Insurance. Call 855 Chupano today. 855 Chupano for a free rate quote. SNL Chupacabra Insurance. Just in case the Chupacabra comes. Ay, ay, ay. La Chupacabra. Oh, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. La Chupacabra. 949 and the PM 862. 2012. You are listening to the Freedomizer Radio Network, freedomizerradio.com. This is 32 Degrees of Insanity. We do our show every Monday and Wednesday night. We start at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, going all the way till midnight. If you like what you're hearing, if you're a first-time listener, we uh, really want to appreciate you guys coming in tonight. Of course, you can join us in our chat room over at freedomizerradio.com. If you're listening to us over on Blog Talk Radio or if you're joining us on the archive or on YouTube, welcome to the show. Of course, right before we went into break, I was talking about kind of what the subject matter of this uh, show is going to be tonight. Last Wednesday night with Alfred Weber, I had him on. We exposed Zachariah Stitchin of being a CIA uh, Pentagon psychological operation, PSYOP, um, and basically that Nibiru, the story of Nibiru, and actually Nibiru is a planet, is a hoax. However, the one thing that everybody is not getting is that there is still the problem of a binary twin star. And that that is not called Nibiru, and it is actually a dual sun. And we have that, you know, what makes our universe any different or our, our, our solar system, any different than any other galaxy in the universe. They, all other ones have dual binary stars in them. What makes ours any different? Kind of like the moon. You know, it's kind of like our moon. Why doesn't our moon, like, rotate like all the rest of the moons around other planets? Kind of ever make you think, why, are, why is the Earth so special? Why are we so special? Why are we, you know, humanity so special and that we're so arrogant that we don't think that other races or other planets or possibly even creators of our own are here or have been here or have planted the seed here? As, as I went into break, I was talking about a article that I posted uh, back in 2011 from a colleague of mine back in 2010. And that, co and that uh, was the story behind Herculobus and the Seven Races presented by Donnie Gilson. Now the last part of the, cra cra the last part of the paragraph, I said, history be repeats itself. It is a profound statement, not only because social and political incidents seem to reoccur, but because large cosmic cycles and events also repeat themselves. These major cycles determine that the final destiny of humanity, and by understanding them, we are able to grasp where our civilization is headed. Now, Gnostic anthropology is a primary concern with the major races of humanity that inhabit the Earth that have inhabited the Earth at different times. Every planet must support seven major races of humanity called root races during the planet's existence. After these seven races have emerged subsisted and dissipated from its, from its surface, the planet becomes a lifeless moon. During the previous cosmic day, our moon was a planet full of life. 
Following the course of every planet, however, it supported its seven root races and eventually became what is today a barren, lifeless moon that now orbits the Earth. Present-day humanity is part of the fifth root race of Earth, called the Aryan race. The first root race was a protoplasmatic race. These beings were fully awake, divine individuals with bodies that were semi-physical, semi-etheric. They were androgynous, androgynous beings having neither female nor fem or male sexual organs. They lived on a continent of Thule, which was located where the North Pole is now found. The second root, root, root race was the Hyperborean race. These beings lived on the continent Hyperborea in what is now Northern Europe. They were also awake, divine, and androgynous beings, and reproduced by fragmentation. The third root race was a Lemurian civilization. The Lemurians inhabited the great continent of Mu, which was, founded with, which was found where the Pacific Ocean is now located. The first half of the Lemurian race consisted of beings uh, that were uh, hermaphrodites, whose bodies both had sets of, of both sets of sexual organs. They split the, the splitting of the sexes into male and female occurred during the second half of the Lemurian civilization. The fourth root race was the Atlantean race. These beings inhabited the continent of Atlantis, located where the Atlantic Ocean now stands. After the submersion of Atlantis, the fifth root race uh, to inhabit the Earth is our current Aryan race. The sixth and seventh root, root, root races are yet to come, following the end of the Aryan civilization. Each root race exists on Earth for as long as it takes the solar system to go around the entire zodiacal belt. The length of time is called a sidereal year and is documented in modern astronomy. Each sidereal year lasts 25,000 is it 25,680 years? I think that's right. Uh, and uh, it says 2568 here, but I think it's 25,680 years. That sounds about right. And for the purpose of Gnostic anthropology, begins and ends when the Earth is found in the zodiac constellation of Aquarius. The Earth stays within each constellation for 2,164 years before moving on to the next. Following Aquarius, it moves from Capricorn, then to Sagittarius, and so on. At the end of the sidereal year, the Earth completes the cycle by moving from Pisces back to Aquarius. On February 4, 1962, the Earth passed from the constellation of Pisces to that of Aquarius, and thus we entered the Aquarian Age. During its lifespan, over the course of one sidereal year, a root race undergoes four seasons, or ages, a golden silver, copper, and iron age. During the golden age, no member of the race possesses the, the psychological ego. It is a true golden age, and during this period, the esoteric mysteries are alive and flourish. The psychological ego begins to take form in the silver age. It's still a noble period, but the mysteries have begun to lose a bit of their light. The light of the mysteries continue to diminish in the copper age as the ego expands, while the light is almost completely gone in the Iron Age, where the ego is fully alive and present. This relationship of the ego with the Four Ages began, began with the Lemurian civilization and reoccurring again during the Atlantean and Aryan races. A root race begins at the start of a sidereal year. The Golden Age begins when the Earth is in Aquarius, and as the Earth moves through the Zodiac Belt, the ages also progress from the Golden to the Silver to the Copper, and then finally to the Iron Age. By the time the Earth enters Pisces and then it returns to Aquarius, the Iron Age of civilization has begun. During the Iron Age, a civilization has uh, degenerated from the time of its Golden Age. The degree of degeneration, however, is particular to each race. The protoplasmatic and hyperborean races had not declined during the Iron Age because they were awake in divine beings, not possessing the psychological ego. The Lemurians reached a cer certain level of degeneration, while the Atlanteans declined even further. Our current Aryan race, however, has reached a degree of degeneration that has not been matched during the entire history of Earth. The amount of ego that we carry in our psyches is vastly greater than the ego possessed by previ previous races. 
Wars, hatred, envy, violence, environmental destruction, ill will, etc. are commonplace in today's society. Since the Iron Age of Civilization occurs near the end of the sidereal year, every race comes to an end during its Iron Age. It can be considered as the Earth purging itself from corrupt humanity that it has been inhabiting it. Now that sounds pretty deep. Although every root race exists on the earth for only one sidereal year, the period of time between the end of one race and the beginning of the next can be many thousands or even millions of years apart. In other words, each root race lasts for only one sidereal year. But many sidereal years may pass before the next root race begins. But why does each root race end? What brings about its demise? thus preparing the way for the next race. To properly answer these questions, it is necessary to understand certain cosmic cycles that have occurred and that will continue to occur through the entire lifespan of our planet Earth. A very important cosmic event takes place each time the Earth enters the zodiac constellation of Aquarius. This event causes great natural disaster to occur, as we are responsible for the end of every root race that existed upon Earth. At the end of every sidereal year, after moving from Pisces to Aquarius, the orbit of the Earth approaches the orbit of a planet found in the Tyler solar system. In Gnosis, the planet is called Herculobus. In the Bible, this planet is referred to as Wormwood, while modern astronomers have named it Bernard 1. Now, I want to give you a little information about the Bernard star. Bernard's star, also occasionally known as Bernard's runaway star, is a very low-mass red dwarf star about six light years away from Earth in the constellation of Ophucus, the snake holder. Bernard's star is the fourth closest known individual star to the Sun, after three components of the Alpha Centauri system. Remember what I talked about the three components? Despite its proximity, Bernard's star, at a dim apparent magnitude of about nine, is not visible with the unaided eye. However, it is much brighter in the infrared that it is, vis that it is in visible light. The star is named after the American astronomer E.E. E. Bernard. He was not the first to observe the star, but in 1916 it measured a proper motion at 10.3 arc seconds per, per year, which remains the largest proper motion of the star relative to the Sun. Bernard's star has been subject of much study and has probably received more attention from astronomers than any other class M dwarf star due to its proximity and favorable location for observant observation near the celestial equator. Now, what have I talked about? I've said that this, this binary star is going, it seems to be, going across the, 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 the celestial equator. It seems to be that's where we've been tracking it. Every you know, and it's moving at a click. I mean, it really is. It moves, it's moving fast, which would make sense if it was another star. It seems to be a, 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 it's moving fast. Now we'll come back to the Bernard star element here in a little bit. Here, <clears throat> Herculobus is about six hundred times the size of the Earth, and so as the orbits of the two planets get closer, their gravity. Now listen to this. And so as the orbits of the two planets get closer, their gravitational magnetic fields exert forces onto one another. What did I say back in June? There's two things working against each other. Two different systems working against each other that are causing all kinds of problems. Now they're saying this September 28th, or this October, September 28th, was it October? September 28th is not October 28th. September 28th is the next flyby after the 17th. Well, September 28th is the next 188 day cycle. You know, we've, you know, statistics, if, if we think about statistics, and, you know, people have tried to say the 188 day cycle is debunked. No, it's not. Plus or minus a few days. I mean, come on. Plus or minus. That's how the statistics are done. It's an accurate science. Especially we had a leap year this year, too. So, actually, with the leap year that we had this year, actually, that would have, uh, March 21st, would have been March 22nd. We just didn't include the leap year. So, actually, what took place on March 21st, the large earthquake that we took place, we had a leap year. 
So actually, if we took that leap year away, we would have been right. Tuberculosis, uh, herberculosis. <laughs> I said that I drew three queens, three tuberculosis, herberculosis. Herculobus never comes close enough to physically collide with the Earth, but due to its size, exerts very strong gravitational and electromagnetic forces. These forces cause great natural catastrophes to occur on the Earth, such as volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tidal waves, hurricanes, etc. In addition, Herculobus gravitational field causes the Earth's axis of rotation to tilt. Currently, it is tilted about 23 degrees from its original position. And Herculobus comes closer as, and as Herculobus comes closer and closer, the tilting will accelerate. This will result in the repulse becoming the equator and vice versa. Currently, we are in the 37th year of the age of Aquarius. Herculobus and the Earth reaches their closest distance during the beginning of the Aquarian Age. The natural catastrophes have been resulted have been responsible for the end of the previous four root races, and will be responsible for the end of our present civilization. We are already seeing more natural disasters throughout the world than in the past. As Herculobus approaches, these disasters will accelerate exponentially. The encounter of the Earth with Herculobus takes place every sidereal year, and is thus a natural cosmic event. The first few races were not afraid of the disaster since they had not degenerated. They still had extraordinary powers and used them to escape catastrophe. The protoplasmatic and hyperborean races, for example, simply submerged themselves into a fourth dimension where the catastrophes began multiplying. Now, isn't that what I said earlier about interdimensional? The portion of the Lemurian race civilization that had not degenerated did the same while the rest perished. What are we talking about? Two timelines, remember? The vast majority of the Atlanteans died during the submersion submersion of Atlantis because a small minority, uh, but a small minority was able to escape. Unfortunately, due to the extreme degeneration of the Aryan race, there will be few who will, who will survive the upcoming cataclysm. Now, this is why I state we all need to to call this out as what it is: Herculobus. Not Nibiru. Communicate with it. Understand it. Embrace it. Not fear it. And maybe, just maybe, we could raise the vibrational, you know, and some people might go, oh, that's crazy talk. Fine. You go your way. I'll go mine. But I'm going to try my best. My best. As I always say to everybody, no one, out, no one out there can save you but yourself. No one. I'm going to try my best to do exactly what these hyperborean races did, and these, protopla uh, these protoplasmatic races did, and try to raise my vibrational energy to embrace what is to come. Now, I've never had, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't had, I've had some personal problems happen around me, but I've never really experienced any major disasters. I mean, I can remember last year, eh, there was like tornadoes all over the Twin Cities, all over the place. And right above my house, clear blue skies. I think we have a special power within all of us to change our destiny. And that what happens to you might not happen to me. And I'm not going to allow myself to go down that timeline. At least I'm going to try my hardest not to. I'm going to try and pray as much as I can. And try to communicate with whatever it is out there that is causing these problems throughout the earth. 
or the universe. Master Samuel Ann Weir openly declares in his writings that we are at the we are at the times of the end. He stated that when the disasters begin occurring, thus who have eliminated fifty percent of their psychological ego will be taken to a place where they will be safe from catastrophe. There's a big one that we all have to kind of grasp, our ego. We all have to let go of our ego. That's a big one. That's a big one not to. I mean, you know, I've got ego, I'm, you know. But yet, I'm trying to release it. I really am trying to do the best I can. We'll be taken to a place where they will be safe from catastrophe. They will watch in safety the cataclysms that will be take that will be taking place on the rest of the planet while continuing to work on themselves in order to eliminate the rest of their ego. So I'm already halfway there. This group of people will be provided the seed for the sixth root race, and no one with ego will be allowed to inhabit the earth during the golden age of that race. Well, that kind of sounds like heaven on earth, doesn't it? The kingdom? The meek shall inherit the earth? Well, I tell you, I mean, I'm humbled that I'm actually living and surviving. And we're going to get into the whole money aspect of things here, too. Because that's a big thing, too. You know, they call me a prophet of doom. What? I, you know, I live off what I got, you know, that I make myself. I don't need anybody's help. You know, I, I think I've got it. The last time I got a donation was like in July. Because I don't ask for it anymore. I care less. You want to help out a guy? Help me out. If you don't, then fine. I don't really care. I get by. God provides me with everything that I need, not you. And I appreciate that people that had, have donated before, you know, that, that donated, when I kind of went on that little reach. But there's really no need for it anymore. I, money is money is neutral, man. I could care less about money. What I care less, what I, what, what I need to know is I'm teaching myself how to be humble. And that's the most valuable thing in the world you could have. They will watch in safety the cataclysm that will take place on the rest of the planet while continuing to work on themselves in order, order to eliminate the rest of their ego. This group of people will provide the seed for the sixth root race, and no one with an ego will be allowed to inhabit the earth during the golden age of that race. This is why Gnostic teachings, which were taught in secrecy, only in authentic, uh, authentic mystery schools are now being made freely available to the public in order for whoever generally works on himself or her, herself to be able to escape the upcoming disasters. And this is from Master Samuel and Mo, Samuel Ann Ware. Let's find out who Samuel Ann Ware is. It's been a while since I've really done re research on that. Uh, let's see, Samuel Ann Ware is hang on a second here let's check him out let's find out I, I think he's a tai chi guy if i'm not mistaken it's been a while samuel n ware born uh in columbia interesting a lot of this stuff is coming out of columbia uh was an author and lecturer of the universal christian gnostic movement where the teachings of the doctrine and synthesis of all religions in both their esoteric and exoteric aspects it has been called neo-gnostic by the historian of esotericism Arthur Varelis. It's called by the historian Jean Freund's Mayer a science of consciousness or knowledge that may be attained through certain techniques. And this is, you know, this is all about raising our vibration and raising our frequency. In order to eliminate the psychological ego and to awaken consciousness, we must practice the three factors for the revolution of consciousness. The three factors are the foundations of the essence of the Gnostic esoteric work. By practicing these three factors, we will be able to study Gnostic anthropology in an experimental manner and to verify its validity through direct personal and consciousness experience. In this way, we will not naively believe or disbelieve, but rather we will know the truth for ourselves. 
And that's exactly what Dr. Carl Jung said when he was interviewed by the BBC and uh, uh, the reporter turned to Dr. Carl Jung and he said, how do you know there's a God? Can you tell me? Can you give me some facts on that? And it goes, difficult to answer that. I don't need to know. I know. I don't need to know that there is a Herculobus out there. I don't need to know that there's a dark star out there. I don't need to know that there's extraterrestrial intelligence out there. I don't need to know there's a God. I know. I feel it in my bones. I feel it down to the micro... I feel connected. Now, whether these aliens or extraterrestrials or divine matrix or whatever it is, that's, that's, that's you to figure out. Are they evil? Are they what? I mean... You know, recently I looked at some, you know, some very disturbing pictures of the Vatican of this uprising of demonic presence behind the Pope. And it was, you know, quite scary. You know, it was, you know, <laughs> some people, some person goes, Donnie will never let go of his ego. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I will let go of my ego. If it, if, it, if, it has, if it has anything to do with saving myself, hell yeah, I'm going to let go of my ego. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. So kind of where I'm going to be taking my next steps is, is, is we're going to be exploring interdimensions. We're going to be ex exploring, you know, uh, Alfred and I will be kind of going down some different paths, as of course, in the 2012-2013 timeline. The catastrophic, the, uh, the catastrophic or the uh, uh, positive timeline. You know, somebody raised a question in, in the chat room, you know, you know, stating, you know, why is everybody trolling Donnie? You know, why? And I asked the same question. I, I, I go, why is it that everybody trolls me and everybody else talking about the same stuff, but they don't want to discredit these other people, but yet they'll come in and chase after me? And I still think the reason why is because I'm one of the few people that will talk about the possibility of a non-catastrophic timeline. That we can work for this in harmony. That the powers that be, the demonic powers that be, want us to go down this, this, this crazy catastrophic timeline. They want us to go there. They want to see us suffer. They know at the end, we'll all end up, you know, where we're supposed to go. But they want us to suffer. Well, why not we play the checkmate with the, with, with the demonic force and say, I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to buy into that. I have my own beliefs. I have my own values. It's up for you to remind yourself. Yourself is the only person that could that could save yourself. And I I feel sorry for some people out there that still have closed minds to any of this. What's happening around them? What's uh, everything that's happening around them? Why? Do they just, why do they still dismiss it? Why?
So what I want to do right now, and this is what I think I'm going to do now for every session, session, kind of what we did, what, what Alfred did on Wednesday. Um, and I want us to start thinking down a positive timeline. And I want us to kind of embrace this new energy that's coming in. I want us to kind of relax, sit back in our chairs. We're going to spend about five minutes now kind of doing the same technique that Alfred did on Wednesday night's show. And if you weren't here on Wednesday night's show, uh, Alfred uh, and I uh, kind of did a meditative state uh, where we had us kind of sit back in our chairs. And we thought about the second sun. And we imagined it. And we know it's there. And we, we embraced it. We sent out our own thoughts and communication to this entity because everything is interconnected. We're all interconnected. And we thought about this star and we, we, we welcomed it. We're like, you know, hey, dude, what's up? Come on in. So I want all of us to close our eyes, relax. Everybody stop chatting in the chat room. Relax. Take yourself into a deeper thought. Embrace the energies around you. Don't think about today's problems. Don't think about the problems of the world. Think about you and your connection with our son, the other son, and yourself, creating this trinity. Embrace it. Relax. Take your time. Try to communicate even even to the evil entities or the dark entities. Embrace the darkness as well. Communicate to them. that you embrace both sides, the positive and the negative. Surround yourself with that. Protect yourself with that. Knowing that you're protected by the universe, you're protected by the by the God source, that you're correct, protected by Christ's light. Understand the inner dimensions and the dimensional aspects of things. Break yourself out of your enclosed box.
All right, guys. You know, some people might not like that. I don't care. If you don't like my show, if you don't like what, uh, you know, if you don't like what I have, I don't care. I'm not trying to have a popularity contest here. You know, there's a guy in here called Dallas Mike goes, well, you know, at least uh, Nibiru wasn't real. Uh, you know what? At least it was entertaining. You know what? I have the right to take my show in any, uh, any direction I want to. Any direction I want to. You know, some people have even asked me, are you going to give it up? And I have thought about it. I've actually thought about stepping down from the show. And going on my own walkabout. And it's still in the back of my head. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and keep you guys as informed as I can on all of the aspects of everything that's coming. But I have a right myself to search within my soul and to find out who Donnie is again. And I have a, I have a right to redefine myself. I, I'm not doing this as a popularity contest. I'm doing this to save us. This is not a joke to be played around with or entertaining or anything like that. This is not a joke. And if you want to take it as non-serious, well, then that's your problem. You know, I don't care how many people are in my chat room. There can be five people in my chat room. The Bible says there's only going to be 144,000 out of the billions of people that are on this planet. Do you think the Bible is going for a popularity contest? I'm trying to get my number and hoping that, that God and Christ look at me and say, hey, you know what? You're worthy of coming in. And that I'm not locked out of the door. Because no one's got any guarantees. Not one person. Not one person out there has got any guarantees. Not me, not you. But I think it's time for us to really start becoming spiritually aware of what is going on. And if you want this thing to come in and you want it to destroy, you think it's all humorous and fun and games, well, then go down that root path. But that's not how my show is going to be. Sure, I'm going to report the news. Sure, what I saw, what happened again in, uh, in Wisconsin with these deaths, with this another massacre that took place at the temple. And, of course, one of our, one of our guys that was doing the serious documentary film, his father was, was killed. What kind of message was being sent out there? And why it hasn't been discussed. Why has it, you know, why, why are we being hid from all of the disclosure? Oh, you know what, Dallas Mike? I'm as wishy washy. Well, that's pretty easy for me to figure out of, you know. Wishy-washy? No, I'm not wishy-washy. People might think I'm wishy-washy. But I'm trying my best to figure this out myself. And I just happen to do it on the air. You know? I happen to do it on the air, so it might sound wishy-washy to you because I'm teeter-tottering within my own mind. You know, I challenge anybody to get up on the, on, 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 on the radio show and, uh, and, and, and talk about the things that I talk about. Create your own radio shows. Why don't any? Well, show your face. We got people out there trying to debunk me, but yet they'll never show their face. They won't even say their real name. What are they hiding? We'll be right back after this, right here on 32 Degrees of Insanity. This is Donnie Gilson on freedomizerradio.com. If you listen to us over in the chat room, 
or over on Blog Talk. Join us at freedomizerradio.com. Fed up with the lies, manipulation, and deceptions of everyone else's opinion? Tired of being ridiculed and conforming to other standards because your standards are based in biblical principles? In truth, there is liberty. Blessings, Freedomizers. Join me, Servant Emmanuel, right here on the Freedomizer Radio Network as I host the Sound Doctrine Christian Ministries Program every Tuesday and Saturday afternoons, noon Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, for truth according to the Holy Scriptures. With like-minded individuals who are not so heavily minded that they are no earthly good, let us stand together, Freedomists, not in their truth, not in our truth, but the truth according to the Word of God. We will have prayer, biblical studies, occasional guests with world news, with issues that are of concern to the body of Christ. Come and fellowship with us as we stand against the coming new world order. Blessings and peace to your home. Sound Doctrine on FreedomizerRadio.com Oh, yeah, that's uh, Minister Kenneth Emanuel show, Sound Doctrine Ministries. Of course, we have Minister Kenneth on our show uh, quite frequently. And, uh, of course, you know, if he's on Tuesday nights, Saturday, or Tuesday afternoons, Saturday afternoons, and again, I think they're doing something on Sundays now as well. So definitely uh, go to freedomizerradio.com for further information about Sound Doctrine Ministries because that is true. You know, are you tired of conforming to everybody else's principles when your when your thoughts are based on biblical truth, you know I'm a believer in Christ the Lord Jesus. I'm a, I'm a believer in Gnostic teachings. You know I'm not 100% a believer in what the Bible has written, but I do have a respect for the Bible and what we have as far as the words that it state. You know I don't read the Bible from cover to cover. I read it, I'll pull out a Bible, I'll pull out a verse, and I'll read how that verse and how it affects me. And what lesson I can learn from that. From that, I'm not going to conform, as I said, as I was getting on, when I, right before I went into break, we had kind of a, you know, I don't know if it was a troll or what, I banned him from the, from the show, because he was, you know, creating a little bit of, you know, he's like, you know, why are you so wishy-washy, you're like Bill Clinton, blah, blah, blah. You know? And, you know, he's, he's, he's sitting there saying, you know, oh, you used to have 60 people in June, and, you know, you're, you know, I want to communicate the truth about this dual son. And if it means I have to change my thought process to communicate that truth, to make sure that I go down a positive timeline, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to or not. Who knows? Maybe there's no such thing. But I'm trying to look at what the what 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 you know. I I don't want. I don't want us to fear this. I don't want us to conform to what the elites want us to do. You know, this is, you know, this is what my Masonic teaching was, you know, that everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own path. Mine happens to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's not your path, that's not, that's fine. I'm not going to shove my, my beliefs down your throat. I just happen to have a radio show. You happen to listen to me. So if you think I'm shoving down my own, you know, like people like on my Facebook where like some person on my Facebook says, you know, I'm sick of you trying to, you know, <coughs> push your own, your, your thoughts down. Well, if you're, if you're going to be on my Facebook, you're my friend, right? Well, we're like-minded individuals, right? So I'm talking my own opinion on my own Facebook page and you're trying to tell me I'm shoving, trying to shove, what are you doing on my page? Well, troll my Facebook page, not a public forum. Just like this is not a public forum. You want your own you want your own show? Go grab one. Proof's looking for 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 uh for other hosts. 
we're looking for hosts on True Frequency. You want to start your own show? Go for it. You know, I like how even like some of these hoax, these these people that want to say I'm a hoax, they say, well, Donnie Gilson, no wonder why you're so polished and uh, and so, you know, such a, such a great broadcaster because he has this background and all of this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I take that as a compliment, even though they're, you know, stating I'm a hoaxer. That being said, I'm going to bring, uh, uh, let's see here, I'm going to bring Jay Larson onto the show, and I'm going to bring Kevin onto the show. Kevin, Jay, welcome. Hello, Donnie. Hey, 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 hello, Jay. Yes. How are you? Uh, Grant, uh, uh, pet the dog for me. Uh, ah. You've had so much problems. Yeah, 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 where is Toto, by the way? Toto! <laughs> I'm just, oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, where the, where the heck is the dog now? Because I didn't even, yeah, normally he's like bouncing around during the show, and uh, he's just laying over on the other side and uh, doing his deal. But yeah, uh, he, he is he is safe and sound with me. Good. Uh, you know, you should be safe and sound with all the things you love. Uh, people, you, you should embrace the love for your friends and your families at this period uh, not hold things totally serious just in the expectation that there's going to be a golden age and you're going to be a part of it and that will put you down the real good timeline oh I agree I, I agree 100% you know and uh, it's it's all about you know embracing the positiveness instead of you know looking at this as some sort of cataclysm because you know you know and what we're gonna you know the, the thing that we're gonna be talking about with the Eagle Foundation the Eagle Foundation kind of talks about the same thing is that we as humanity have a choice we have a choice have a choice and uh, repeating I don't know if you have me on uh, on speaker uh, but um, we we do have a choice to make here and I hope we we choose the right one <laughs> well it, it, it's really a fun time um now oh. about about the trolls donnie yeah they're yeah. Your, they're, they're your most valuable asset because <laughs> every time they kick an emotion in you that means there's an emotion that needs to be uh neutralized embrace your emotion sure. um allow the judgment to pass and you become you judge things less and oh, yeah. I, I, I and, and, and you don't attract them then uh, yeah, I'm try I'm trying my hardest you know but you know of course you know that there is going to be you know uh, I just find it funny I, I find it hilarious that uh, that you know we've got all of these other guys talking about this destructive timeline you know and the trolls don't bother them at all when I start saying, you know, one, Nibiru is a hoax, we have a, a positive timeline we can go down, we have a dual sun coming in, we have all this stuff that we can embrace, oh, boy, do they, they, they it's like a magnet. I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I must be like a, a troll magnet. I, I, I must be that hot. <laughs> you, well, well, like I said, you, but, you, but, you're, you're wanting to... Clear all this junk out of yourself, so you become one of the 144 that helps. The oh, yeah. rest. and that's true. You know, that's that's because you know the one thing is you know, and, and and I embrace the trolls. I do, you know, even though I get a little pissed off at them, I do embrace them because hopefully, at some point down, you know, it might be you know several years down the line that you know they'll they'll go well, you know. I'm glad Donnie was there, you know, and 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 I and I opened their mind to something else, because when they when they started attacking me, I know that I'm pushing a button within their own thought process of that. Well, maybe Donnie might be right, but I'm kind of scared to admit that. Mm -hmm. The ego gets in the way, and it anything that threatens the ego, the ego automatically throws up fear. So. So that you experience it, then so you would generally do two things: uh, flight or fright. Yeah. Fight, fright or flight um, or fight. You know. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know, and, and that's and that's fine. You know, that that that's fine. Hey, Jay, I got another call here. Uh, Kevin, are you still there? I'm here, Donnie. Thank you. Okay, let me uh, let me bring this two four eight on here, guys. Let me see who this person is here. Uh, area code two four eight. Welcome to the show. Yes, this is uh, Larry calling from Michigan. Hey, Larry from Michigan. Yeah. Um, you know, when all these people are talking on here and they're saying, you know, like, where is this thing? And, right. uh, you know, they're, they're, it's like, you know, it's like a big show to them. They think that, you know, when once it comes, it's like, this is it, guys. You know, it's like, what are you waiting for? You know, it's like they it's like they want the end to come. Yeah, it almost seems like everybody is like, like on this, you know, everybody has got this apocalyptic, I want it to happen, bring it on already, you know. Yeah, and if it doesn't, they're disappointed, and then they get right. mad. Yeah, and, um, and I'd, I was rather, say, I'd rather be prepared than and investigate than not be prepared and look blindly into, into the future. Well, I was going to say, like, this goes back for me, like, over 40 years ago. I'm 54. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, my brother, he used to uh, talk about uh, stuff that you're talking about now today, over 40 years ago. Wow. And one of the things that he was talking about was uh, when you had Alfred on your show on True Frequency, um, about the astro, not the, uh, well, he was into astral projection, my brother was. Okay. Oh, wow. Point. Okay. Wow. That, that, and okay. he was telling my dad stories and getting my dad all mad and everything, and I was like 10 or so, and sure. he talked about the the holographic uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. And he was bringing it up then, and I was so, so fascinated by it, I was just amazed listening to this as a boy. And I don't know where he got this inf information from, but then when I was doing some research on the Internet, I found out who this guy William Cooper was. This was about four mm -hmm. years ago. Okay, yeah, Bill Cooper. And during one of his uh, seminars that he had done, it was recorded in 91, he talked about it. He talked mm -hmm. about the same thing. It was like, this was like 30 years later when he was talking about it, when I heard about it when I was a kid. And then here it is, you know, today you guys have been talking about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how many more dots do you need to connect to say that, yeah, there's something going on? Well, yeah, you know that that was one of the one of the things that uh, Alfred and I talked about was, of course, the crucifixion. You know how Andrew Bazago, you know, even witnessed it himself in the time travel Project Pegasus program, uh, and uh, you know even even uh, uh, witnessed the the rise of Christ as well. You know, so we have to, you know, and and that's fascinating to hear that you know your brother was talking about that forty years ago. I mean, yes. that's that's pioneer right there. You know. Mm -hmm. That that's that's you know that's back you know when Alfred was you know what he wrote the Age of Cataclysm you know early seventies um, you know this is you know because I believe you know we are all interconnected that inside of our minds the truth is there we just need to unlock it exactly you know it's and it's like I say you know when I see this thing it's like another eye opener it's like you know there's no denying that there's enough this is all going on I mean if if you're in denial you're you're a fool right yeah I, I, there, I think more people now are starting to wake up to what's happening uh, you know but it's it's on the other hand it seems like there still are now I don't know if they're government paid chills or they're looking out for you know this is this is an area that we're going to be discussing uh, when I bring uh, this 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 corporation or this this foundation called the Eagle Foundation uh, onto the show, where still everybody's kind of like worshiping money, and and I think these trolls, some of them, are still paid. You know that's their income, and that's they're still masters of the money. You know, and they're going to follow down the money at all costs. And that's we have to we have to as a society as a humanity veer away from money. We really do because that is that is the root of all evil. It really is. Oh yeah, definitely. And 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 people are still you know people people will attack me say oh you know Donnie's asking for donations or Donnie's a prophet of doom. You know what? I could care less. You know I'm going to make it day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, without anybody. You know, I haven't looked for anybody for help before. I'm not going to look for anybody for help from now. You know, everybody has got their own, you know, has to take care of themselves. But in a future humanity, when the ego is gone and people will look out and the truth is there, you know, when the truth is readily available and we know the truth, 
man, this world is going to be such a better place. It really well, you is. even you even talked on your show too, like about how Hollywood is uh, uh, desensitizing us or getting us ready, you know, because they're putting these yeah. movies out or TV shows. My brother sure. talked about that too. He was saying the same thing to my dad. They're coming out with all these alien movies and stuff. At that time, it was like E, not not E. T. was Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and he said this was getting everybody ready for this sort of thing, that they were going to make this big announcement. Of course, that was over 30 years ago. We're still waiting. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right, right. But we're, the idea was there that, you know, you hear the same thing. Here it is, you know, 30, 40 years later, and you're hearing the same thing. Well, you know, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's you know, one time I was actually thinking it's, it's weird that you're, you, you brought up Hollywood. I was, you know, as a Mason, I think of ritual, and I and I was always thinking about you know when we partake or participate in any type I, of and I was always thinking about when we, uh, when we we hang on, I had an echo on Jay's side uh, when we when we partake in any theatrical performance, we are actually partaking in a ritual of some sort because we are in a mass gathering and we are watching something. So imagine if. If we're talking about the multiverse, okay, and we're watching, say, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, all right, we are actually witnessing something that could be happening in a different dimension already, and we're just partaking in that ritual, that we're actually partake, participating, and actually the disclosure is happening right in front of us through the programming of the theater of, of, uh, of Hollywood, and then we're actually witnessing it. And I think that's what's happening right now, even with, you know, alternative media, what's happened, uh, you know, with the tragedy, unfortunate tragedy that happened in Aurora, Colorado, and the new one that just happened up in, uh, um, in Wisconsin. We are partaking as a humanity in ritual, and uh, we have to be conscious of that. We even had a shooting here uh, last night uh, here oh. in Detroit. Uh, seven people were shot. Nobody was killed. Seven. But it's like, you know, what? Yeah, there were seven people that were injured, but nobody was killed. And uh, it's like, you know, what the heck's going on? You know, it's just like one more nut out there doing their, their dirty deed. Well, I was reading today on uh, uh, the Fox Night. I always I listen to, I always keep uh, contact with my, um, uh, my family and friends back home in Minnesota. And I was, uh, I was sent this link from Fox 9 News. Let me see if I can find it here. I want to read this to you guys. This thing is crazy. Uh, Fox 9 News out of um, Minnesota. Egan man arrested in Joker threats claims to sympathize with Holmes. Uh, Egan police say officers responding to a report of loud music ended up arresting a man making repeated references to the Joker and the Colorado theater shooting. Telling police he understands the shooter's motives and would embark on his own rampage. On 6.13 p.m. on July 31st, officers responded to the scene on the 4,000 block of Ridgecliff Road, found a 56-year-old gentleman, Thomas Michael Casper, standing in his neighbor's driveway. Once identified, Casper police learned he had an active misdemeanor warrant out on Dakota County, and they placed him under arrest. Police said he voluntary, voluntarily put his hands behind his back as the officers put him in handcuffs. However, he became agitated and started cursing as he approached the squad car. Officers say while he was being escorted, he began making references to the Joker and the shooting suspect facing trial for the shootings in Aurora, Colorado. As Casper was being put inside the squad, he told, he told police he was the Joker and shouted, I'm coming back. You guys are done as his neighbors at his neighbors. While he was being taken to the Dakota County Jail, Casper kept referencing the Joker. Soon he began making threats towards the officers, saying, I'm such a criminal, I should be the Joker. If I had a gun, I would kill you. Casper then told officers he should have dyed his hair orange and wavered be between asking them to let him go and urging him to keep him in custody. Casper said, My home is for in foreclosure. I have been kicked out of my house. What else can go wrong? It doesn't matter. I wouldn't own a gun, but if I did, I would do what Holmes did. I would blow people away. Put me in jail for the rest of my life. I don't care. Put me in jail with criminals. I'll grab them by the throat and kill them. Police said that they believe Crasper's threats are genuine, saying they would attempt to carry out some of the threats against the neighbors and officers. And it goes on and goes, he goes, you better not let me go or I'll go after those neighbors, Casper told officers while in custody. I don't own a weapon, but I'll come after you fuckers and I'll shoot you. 
I can understand why Holmes does it. Let me have your gun. I'll shoot you in the fucking head. I'll find you sometime. And it keeps going on. I mean, people are going insane right now. Because I think when, as this, you know, and Terrell Croft has talked about this before, as this dual sun comes in, we are experiencing, we talked about this on Truth Frequency on Saturday, uh, this mental health issue is people are starting, we're starting to see more and more cases of bipolar, schizophrenic, schizophrenic disorder. We're seeing all kinds of weird things happening uh, out there, and what it, it just kind of blows me away. Well, even Arizona talked about that with, uh, you know, about the, the brain's going to get sucked out and all that kind of thing. It's going to make people go right. nuts. He was talking about that, too. Last year. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was talking about that. I remember I remember when he gave, revealed the coordinates. So it's, you know, this is where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, stuck on, you know, what, what, what is happening. You know, it's like, okay, are we going to, you know, is there a social thing as a positive timeline? Is is there no such thing as a negative timeline, or are we just all just plainly screwed? And, uh, you know, but, you know, I just don't know. I don't know, you know, but I, all I can do is, is find out what's the best for me. You know, I don't have any family anymore. You know, my father passed away last year, and my grandmother passed away. So, I, you know, they're really the only family I have is my, my brother Gary, who is in Los Angeles. And, you know, he's like, you know, you know, let's keep, you know, try to keep faith in humanity, keep, you know, a positive attitude towards all this, and maybe this will all come to pass and we'll have a, you know, a better future. And sometimes I, I just, I just don't know. I, I, sometimes I, I, it's hard, you know, especially me being uh, up in the public eye and, you know, being trolled all the time. Sometimes it just, it, it makes me think about humanity and, you know, the empathy that, uh, that, that people have for, and the compassion that people have for one another. It seems like it's, it's non-existent. Well, maybe this guy that, that pulled his little Joker stunt, you know, because he his house is in full foreclosure and he didn't have anything else to lose, he figured, yeah. well, if I do this, I'll, I'll go behind bars and I'll get three meals a day. It's three squares a day. You know, yep. that, homeless, homeless people have been doing that for years. You know, I, I, I remember when I, was in, when I was back in Minnesota, you know, we used to have this park right by my house. And a lot of the homeless, you know, there was not a big, big homeless problem in, uh, in, in St. Paul, but there were some. And I remember I used to talk to this guy, he used to call himself Jesus. He looked just like Jesus. It was really weird. And, you know, he said he was from California. And he says, well, I come here during the summers, you know, to Minnesota. And then I, you know, head out to uh, California during the winters. But he says, if I ever get myself at a jam, I just go and get, you know, you know, steal some copper and get myself arrested so I know that I I, uh, I got three squares coming. You know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and the homeless population has been doing it for years. A lot of people do it. You know, it's even prisoners. Even prisoners, because I can never really understand this. You know, I don't think the prison system, the prison system is a failure here in, in the United States, at least. I mean, I, we just treat people like vicious animals, and I think it's complete rehabilitation of failure because we send criminals out into the population to fail. We don't set them up. We don't get them, you know, into an apartment. We don't get them into a job. We set them out there. Here's your 50 bucks. Go have a good time. I remember one time I was I was getting on the bus in, in Minnesota, saw this dude with a, a white T-shirt on and just some slacks on. And I sat there and started talking to him. He looked like a normal, you know, African-American guy. And uh, he's like, yeah, I just got out of prison not more than two hours ago. He says, all they gave me was 50 bucks. And, I, you know, I'm heading to my mom's house now to really to start my life over again. But I just, you know, and he says, he says, I'm just kind of scared because I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to find another job. And he says, like, you know, I, I, I might just do something, just go back. Because at least I know I got a, a roof over my head and that I'm safe and I got medical treatment and all that. You know, it, it, it made me sad to think that, that somebody would actually commit a crime to go behind bars for the, where they felt safe. Yeah. Yeah, it's and pretty I, sad. It's sad. It's a sad state of affairs. What do you think about that, Kevin? Well, I, uh, as someone who's been active with the veterans, you know, and seeing all of the challenges with the veterans and knowing that the large percentage of the homeless are veterans. Oh, yeah. It, it, 
it's pretty ridiculously sad because, you know, out of any any of the groups of homeless and just any groups in general that should be having almost red carpet treatment their entire life are disabled veterans, especially if their disability is, um, you know, in accordance with their service. Well, nothing kills me more. Nothing kills me more is when I see, you know, uh, you know, a guy, you know, an old guy in a wheelchair with, you know, there, there was this guy here in Reno when I first moved here. His name was Don too, and I haven't seen him uh, in like four months. But he was a uh, a naval veteran. Uh, both of his legs were amputated, and uh, you know, I when he was one of the first guys I really got to know while I was here in Reno, and I would always, whenever I came down. To, you know, he was always there. I'd always go, since his name was Don, we, you know, we started conversing a lot, and he knew my name was Don, and we started talking back and forth. And I got, always got scared whenever I didn't see him, you know? And then I haven't seen him in like four months, and I have no idea where he is. And uh, I'm just like, you know, but people just always turn to blind eye. And, you know, nobody know. I mean, you know, people just, like, turn their backs on veterans they turn their back on the homeless they turn their back on people that have worked their tails off for you know we don't know what the story is behind that homeless person we have no idea you know we, everybody right now is one paycheck pretty much you know the middle class or the low middle class is one paycheck away from being homeless pretty much you know and you know we should all count our graces that we at least have a roof over our head you know that's that's what i you know i if 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 the if if the whole grid went down tomorrow and you know if if everything goes chaos what's going to happen to everybody what are where are we, we're going to have to turn to each other to make it through this and i don't think we're ready well i don't not only do we, are we not ready but People are so afraid and wrapped up into the whole fear of turning to their neighbor because of, you know, ego is probably the biggest cause. But yeah, that that's what, actually that's one of the reasons why I moved up to where I live in Moorhead, Minnesota, because it was before Y2K, and I believed and saw the potential of Y2K. Right. And it was in '98. I was over at a buddy's house, and this is I'm already in my Kevin, wheelchair. Kevin, let, Kevin, let's let's pick that up. At, we're at the top of the hour. I need to take a quick break here. Right. Uh, Larry, you can stick around with us if you want, uh, and we'll be back here for another hour of 32 degrees of insanity right here on the Freedomizer Radio Network. If you want to call in? Uh, please feel free. Three four seven three two four three seven zero four. Again, that's three four seven three two four three seven zero four. I think we really need to talk about: Are we ready? as humanity to prepare what's coming in are we ready to turn to our friends and family or to to, our, to even our neighbors because we don't even some people don't even talk to their neighbors anymore i mean i, I feel fortunate that i that i talk to my neighbors you know my neighbors have a dog and you know so we 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 have that connection and there's you know some girls down the, the street that are that are very christian oriented and so i have that connection with them but it seems like we don't even connect anymore to our neighbors or to the people that are around us. We forget about the ways of living. We forget about the ways of living in harmony with one another. We're so, you know, we talked about the ego earlier in the show. we got to let go of that. We have to humble ourselves that we, you know, we are a human race. That we have to have empathy. Even the Vatican said that if if this whole contraception issue is a result, that people are going to starve. We'll talk about it when we come back here on 32 Degrees on Saturday, right here on FreedomizerRadio.com. This is Debbie. And I'm Michael, along with C.D., the Constitutional Defender Dog. Is mainstream media giving you the real stories, or are they just telling you what they want you to hear? Join us for Securing Liberty on Freedomizer Radio, Thursday evenings at 11 p.m. Central. We'll be joined by great guests, discuss interesting and important topics, current events, maybe even a little humor. Be prepared for anything. It will be 90 minutes of information sure to help you on your quest for truth. So join Securing Liberty at 11 p.m. Central on Freedomizer Radio. In today's economy, the ability to access data quickly can mean the difference between success and failure. Maximum Archive's MyDrive service lets you have access to your data from just about any device and pretty much anywhere. 
My Drive makes sure that when it counts, you can get what you need, because failure is not an option. Sign up for My Drive today at MaximumArchive.com. Use partner code FREEDOMIZER at checkout and help fund the FREEDOMIZER radio network. That's MaximumArchive.com. You know the Constitution like the back of your hand. You've read books, listened to podcasts, attended lectures, surfed websites, and watched videos. You've made liberty your life's goal, but something seems to be missing. Stickers from LibertyStickers.com. Exercise your freedom of speech with the world's most dangerous bumper stickers. That's LibertyStickers.com. But wait, there's more. You can buy Liberty Stickers wholesale. Get them for 99 cents each when you put 100 or more in your shopping cart in any combination. Sell them or give them away. They're great for gun shows, flea markets, fairs, outreach, and more. Earn extra money, promote freedom, and spread the word. Need custom stickers, labels, or decals for your organization or business? Liberty Stickers makes them. Go to LibertyStickers.com to order or call 877-873-9626. LibertyStickers.com, the world's most dangerous stickers. Our new show is dedicated to prophecy and our survival in times of great disasters. Greetings, I'm Mars, commander of the Watcher Society. We are a private think tank of the most elite thinkers on the end times ever. Welcome to the Watcher's Prophecy Radio on Freedomizer. Our show highlights the end of days as seen through the scriptures and how to prepare for the events we see in the news. We will inform you, like no other show, on the events occurring now in Bible prophecy. Come join us for the unveiling of tyranny in the end of day's forecast. What you can do about it. Are you one of the tens of people who are tired of seeing chemtrails? Fed up with the government geoengineering you every other day? Take a dose of La Mecha Wong Chemtrail Remover daily and you'll never worry about weather modification again. With great ingredients and quality vitamins from Mexico and China like fluoride, barium, high fructose corn syrup, and colloidal mercury, your brain will be a virtual etch-a-sketch lickety-split. La Mecha Wong Chemtrail Remover. Wow, I don't even remember the tagline for this, so it must be great. <laughs> All right, we're back. 32 degrees of insanity, 1104 in the p.m. Uh, August 6, 2012. August 6, man. <clears throat> I am going to be old here coming up in, uh, let's see here, four, 15 days? <laughs> wow. Holy macanolis, man. I'm going to be 43 years old in 15, two weeks. Wow, that makes me uh, feel. <laughs> and I, I, I was talking to someone earlier about that. I, 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 I just, I don't think I can go another forty years with the way things are going now. You know, we talked about this, uh, this, this uh, particular um, story uh, that was written about the seven races and Herculobus. We talked about the Eagle Foundation. We talked about this tragedy in Wisconsin. We talked about the tragedy in Aurora. We talked about the negative, the positive timeline. We talked about the um, negative catastrophic timeline. We talked about dual suns. We talked about Herculobus. We talked about the Nibiru hoax. We talked about Zachariah Stitchin. There's so many things we've talked about tonight. But the one thing that we were talking about is right where we wanted to break was humanity. And this is the one thing I love about my show is it takes a turn, you know. It always takes a turn, you know. We get into these subject matters. And tonight, tonight I, I, like, had my, my mind set on I wanted to talk about the 2012-2013 Nibiru flyby mem hoax. Did Zacharias Stitson cooperate with U.S. intelligence in the setting up of the 2003 invasion of Iraq and the 2012-2003 Nibiru flyby memorandum? Uh, this is what I wanted to talk about. 
But we went into, we had our little meditation earlier. Some people didn't like it. Some people left. This is my show. I'm going to bring it in any way I wish. Anyway, if you don't like it, fine, don't listen. If you like what we have to say here on my show, I thank you for embracing our message. We're not here to to uh, make friends. We're not here to uh, be popular. We're not here to, you know, there was a, a point in time when I, when, you know, we're number one, da, da, da. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter to me anymore. It doesn't matter. It's nice to be on the air. It's nice to be able to talk. It's nice to have good conversations. It's great to have Kevin. It's great to have Larry. It's great to have, you know, Jay. It's great to have people calling in. And if you want to call in, feel free. 347-324-3704. 347-324-3704. I see we have a plethora of people listening to the show on the uh, on their phones right now, which is great. It's great to see that. We have a 604, 508, 646, 248, 501, all goes on. Um, you know, it's great that we have, you know, we have our international listeners as well. They're listening on Skype, listening on Blog Talk Radio. You know, we have our people that are, 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 are in our chat room. You know, our devoted listeners that have been there. You know, and it's, it's fantastic to see everybody. And I love it. You know, it, it it's great. You know, some of you I've never ever talked to. I've never even communicated to you. You're on my Facebook page. You're, you know, some, you know, we, we communicate that way sometimes. And you send me stuff and love and support. And I always appreciate that. You know, and it's, and it's sometimes people, some people say, you know, Donnie, don't listen to what other people have to say. Oh, I'm a sensitive type of guy. Always sensitive. Because I care about humanity. I care about you guys. I care about everybody, actually. I really do. Really, I mean, even I've said it before about the trolls. I even care about the trolls. And, you know, I do. They might not think so. You know? But I do. I do. I care. I just don't like to be attacked. And if you're going to attack me or troll me, I'm going to fight back. Sometimes I've fought back pretty hardcore. You know? I'm not. I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I, I can be a fighter instead of a lover, too. That being said, I'm going to bring Kevin. Uh, hang on a second here. I'm going to bring uh, Kevin and Larry back to the show. Welcome by the show, guys. Hi. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyways, we, what were we talking about before we, uh, you, you were mentioning about uh, your move up to Moorhead? Right. Well, it was in 1998 when uh, I was looking into, I was listening to Art Bell and listening to Y2K, and I saw the yep. potential of something happening. Mm -hmm. And I was over at a buddy's house, and we were sitting around a, nice beautiful glass piece and discussing things and the other couple guys that were there I was telling them about Y2K and all of a sudden one of the guys said that would be the coolest thing we could kill whoever we want oh god and I just I I nearly lost it and I'm like what he's like well imagine there would be no law and so we could go and kill whoever we want we could and I was just blown away. And this was when I first got my wheelchair. And I said, if something happens in the cities, I have the word victim on my forehead. And, yep. and I just recalled the year before Fargo-Moorhead went through that major flood in the Red River Valley. Yeah, I remember that. And I saw how phenomenal the community got together and got through it. Oh yeah, that was that out. was craziness. I remember that. I can remember watching on Care Eleven because uh, I had I had went home. It was ninety eight, right, or ninety seven? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yeah, I, I, I had uh, had just got back because I was working for Disney. I think I was working for Disney when I came back in ninety seven. 
and uh, all these years kind of run into each other at some point. But I remember being back in Minnesota during that period of time, and I was watching everybody do the sandbags, and, and I was like, wow, you know. And and we did that too in, in the cities <clears throat> last. Was I think it was last year when we had the, uh, well, at least the downtown community. Uh, got together and started sandbagging because everybody thought that the Mississippi River Boulevard was going to be uh, taken out uh, because of the flooding. And uh, so everybody got together and uh, the downtown community, we actually had kind of a party, a uh, sandbag party. And uh, it was it was cool. You know, it was a lot of fun. You know, and that's what I think that we have to remember is that when we come together as a community, we can have a lot of fun in the, in the, in the, in, in the sign of disaster. You know, and nothing ever happened. That's the funny thing is when we did all that sandbagging and we got prepared for it and we waited and waited and we thought that the, was it was going to flood, never flooded. <laughs> right. It's kind of like the you same know, but, thing, same thing that's happening now is if, you know, we're just saying, hey, you know, get prepared, get prepared, get your soul prepared, get your, get, get your, get your mind prepared, get, you know, start sandbag, you know, being part of that consciousness sandbagging, and if it doesn't happen, well, you know what? We had a little bit of fun doing it, and we avoided something. Thank God. Well, and that's that's something that I tell everybody because I truly believe in that Boy Scout motto of you know be prepared, yeah, or prepare for the worst and hope for the best, right? Because Always. there is there is a total psychological feeling of safety. When you know that if something was to happen, I have my little extra bit of food, I have my supplies, and and if it doesn't happen, hey, I got some extra food. Right, yeah, somebody on my, my Facebook today writes me an email. She says, Johnny, she goes, here, let me see if I can find it here. I'm going to read this to you. It, it was actually quite, uh, let's see here, was it, who was it, Loretta? was it Rhonda? Let's see here. Uh, she's like, well, I've got like, okay, where she goes? Oh, she goes, okay. Here, here I'm going to read this. She goes, uh, she goes, hey, Don, is this going to be the case where we'll be able to, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, she goes, is this going to be the case where we'll be able to see this thing coming from the naked eye? Is so many, how many days in advance do you think? Will you please tell us where, where to be looking? I live in Arizona, and I'm prepared food-wise for only three months. I'm so broke, and I've put so much money into my preparations. Getting right with God is the fastest way possible, for sure. I'm glad my brother found you and told me about your site. You know, I go join the club. I'm, you know, I'm completely broke because I've, you know, I, if anything was to happen tomorrow to me, I wouldn't be prepared. If we were completely, re I, I mean, I've got some top ramen ready to go. But I, I just don't eat at my house. I eat out every day, and I'm not prepared. I am not prepared. I am emotionally and physically and psychologically prepared for something to happen. But fiscally or uh, or food-wise, I'm not prepared at all. Not. So I, I have to put faith in God that he'll provide me with everything I need because that's what's promised, you know? So that's why I don't think anything major is going to happen because I think God's not going to allow it to happen. Well, I mean, there's that's the sad part about it, though. When it comes down to it, we just don't know. We don't. We don't. And we have to, you know, I, I put my faith there. And people might say, well, that's kind of stupid, you know, that you do that. But on the other hand, you know, I also, if, if anything was to go down, I know that the community around here in Reno would come together. I mean, I think we have, uh, you know, uh, Reno here seems, it reminds me of St. Paul, actually. Um, you know, if I had to choose to where a person would survive in the Twin Cities, you know which city I would pick between St. Paul and Minneapolis. Mm. <laughs> I think that's an easy question to answer. <laughs> I think St. Paul would, would rise up way before Minneapolis would. Minneapolis is just a cosmopolitan city. It's kind of an ego-driven ego city. St. Paul's a little bit more humble. And I... And I I, I feel very privileged that I was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. I love St. Paul, uh, you know, even though I've had my problems there. You know, I still love my city. Well, that was, you know, the other reason why I did move out of out of Minneapolis, because I lived in the uptown area, okay. is when I started seeing that they were systematically gridding the city for shutting it down. Because oh, you can, yeah. if you if you go around the cities, you can see all of the points 
of where, okay, if they took this bridge down, you would definitely separate Minneapolis and St. Paul, and there was like too many strategical places that all of a sudden cropped out of nowhere, plus Minneapolis got their entire cameras set up in downtown Minneapolis. Oh, well, yeah, Minneapolis is probably one of the most uh, uh, digital camera camera uh, uh, equipped cities in the country. I and, mean, and once I once I saw Nicolet just filled every block, oh, every corner, every block. It's I was, crazy. I'm like, I had enough of this. And this Big Brother. If anybody's ever ever been to Minneapolis, Minnesota, I mean, you think going to like London or London, which has got a lot of electronic surveillance as well. Minneapolis uh, is just crazy. Every single corner there is a camera on every single, and especially when they built. Uh, uh, that uh, block X or block uh, block E, uh, that okay, just, yeah. yeah block E turned into uh, uh, you know and I can see where you know they were trying to protect but I mean it, it just it, it turned everywhere throughout Minneapolis and even even St Paul has got that now too every single corner in St Paul I mean the, the Twin Cities is like Big Brother it is it is completely a fascist. Uh, uh, these those t two cities are, you know, I mean, it's Big Brother, and they say, well, they're, you know, some of the cameras are not operable, and you know that nobody's really spying on bullshit. You know, did I mean, you, I, grew, huh? I'm just. Did you recall when um, the University of Minnesota built their big underground base? Uh, they, they, on the uh, on the yeah. West Bank. On the West right Bay, there by, right? Yep, right there by Washington Bridge. Right, right, they, right. They tunneled down. They did that when they, they built. They did that when they built that that art thing on the side archive. of the archive. Yeah, yeah, they, that's what they called it. Right. They they called it an archive, but then when they first started drilling that, we, uh, me and some buddies, we went down there probably a good six blocks. And they kept going, and it was pretty, uh, pretty freaky. <laughs> well, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I mean, well, Minneapolis and St. Paul have got some of the largest underground networks oh, yeah. in the country. You know who built Minneapolis and St. Paul, right? You know who designed? Well, who designed St. Paul? You know who designed St. Paul, right? The um, um, oh, what's his name? Who? Um, the same guy that designed Boston designed St. Paul. Oh, I was no. That's not the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, the um, same, the same, the same uh, city architect that just that that designed Boston, because Boston, of course, has got all of the underground. I mean, you know, where did everybody? You know, that I mean, everywhere there's an underground tavern in Boston. You know, underground. Right. Every, but same same thing was built in St. Paul. It was the same design. And Minneapolis just followed, you know, followed place with that because it was kind of a, a stretch over to Minneapolis. But you're right, you know, is if you take out the 94 bridge going across the Mississippi, and you take out again, you take out the 35 W bridge, you don't have any way in or out of Minneapolis or St. Paul. You're stuck, right? You know, especially Minneapolis. Minneapolis, the only thing you got going, you take out the 35 or the 94 bridge, you can go. And then if you take out, uh, you'd, ha you'd have to take out the uh, 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 35494 bridge, too. That would contain everything, and the only way it would be north. You could go north. That's it. Yeah. You know, that that pretty much it. You're kind of contained. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just... I really just hope that this can pass. That you know we can we can we can deal with a with a positive timeline here. Uh, you know, because I really I actually kind of really would think it'd be cool to see a dual sun, something to change the whole sky makeup. You know, wouldn't that be cool? I think it'd be well, absolutely cool. When uh, you know when we were talking last week about this too, and I was telling you about Emmanuel Velikovsky, right? And I was trying to find some of the other stuff because um, we've talked about this before, you know, and other, you know, on Skype and stuff, but I believe, and, and this is my thing with the Zachariah Stitchin, I don't believe that Zachariah Stitchin was used for disinformation about the Nibiru thing. I believe Zachariah Stitchin was used 
for disinformation about the creation of civilization and the humans on Earth. Oh, so the, the whole Anunnaki, the whole Anunnaki story. Right, because there was, that's where I found a lot of my discrepancies in my research with Zachariah Stitchin, because Zachariah Stitchin was to believe that there was another solar system that these entities came from. Right. And, and my investigation, I believe that the planet that once was and is now the asteroid belt was where we stem from. That when, when this thing or this celestial body came, it's, to me it's one or two things in my investigation. Mm -hmm. It is either a outside source that's going to be coming back, that comes back on a great grand cycle, or, right. we've talked about this before, it was the core of this planet that was destroyed. Well, you know, the, a lot... Of, you know, this is why I think that possibly, like Bob Dean says, Nibiru is a intelligently controlled Vamana. It would make sense if this thing was destroyed, like the Death Star in Star Wars, they rebuilt it, you know, and created it into some sort of <coughs> movable planet. And um, I, I, you know, if, 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 that has anything to do with it, then I would be more geared to say that it has something to do with the Atlanteans and the Lamarians than it has anything to do with the right. Anunnaki. Exactly. Yeah. I that that yeah, I, I, I the whole story that's why I kinda of, kinda of gave a caveat in the beginning was, you know, when you know when when Alfred and I were talking about the hoax which is Zachariah Stitchin, you know, the Nibiru hoax, I wanted people to cling on more to what you're saying is the whole Anunnaki story. The story behind Nibiru is the hoax. It's not the Nibiru itself is a hoax. It's the story that Zachariah Stitchin came up with, this 3,600-a-year elliptical orbit, that the Anunnaki are on this home planet, and that this is where the creators came, and blah, 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 the whole Book of Enoch, all of this stuff. No, because if we really look and we we investigate even further, I mean, I I was I was more down the the her, uh, the uh, Merculos, her, her, oh God, I can't even it, spit it out. <laughs> the the red planet brown dwarf thing. I was even more into the old Nibiru thing three years ago. I thought that it was Herculobus and and not right. Nibiru. I I was like. Yeah, the, you know, and then I heard all about this Nibiru stuff. I was like, okay, well, that makes more positive, not not positive, but more mainstream. You know, people can associate with Nibiru more. But now I think we need to get away from that. It was a hoax. You know, the Anunnaki thing. I don't think is true. You know, I I don't believe that we were created by the Anunnaki. And if the Anunnaki were anything, they were fallen angels. Well, Donnie. You, you, you talk too about like, uh, you've heard of the, the Hopi Indian tribes. Of course, yeah. Okay, they, they talk about the blue and the red kachina. Kachina, yeah. And, the, and, okay. and we all know what kachina means, right? It's, it's a, yeah, I believe it's a star. Well, the, I think that's the what word, they, the word kachina, huh? the word kachina actually means teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, go well, on, sorry. The like great teachers. The great well, I'm saying that you know that the, they've they've got writings and scrolls and stuff that they've got uh, written where they talk about this stuff too and about how these people came down and helped and educated and did things. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot going on there, like with what you're talking about. That you know, there when you mention like you think that this could be a, a, a spaceship or or a planet that has people on it. Um, who knows? You know, we we, we, we weren't around then. We weren't, no. And that's why I say I would be more apt to think that this might have something to do with the Atlanteans and the Lamarians as, as what I talked about in the seven races. Because one of the things that I always could never understand, my dad used to sit me down and used to say, you know, that, uh, you know, we we have to be careful of the Aryan, the, the Aryan, uh, what did he, he called it, the Aryan agenda. 
And I was like, what the hell are you talking about, Aryan agenda? You know, I was thinking KKK or something, you know, and, you know, or white supremacist type thing, you know, that back then. And now I think about maybe he was talking about, because he never was really quite forthcoming to me about that. And maybe what he was talking about was this Aryan race, which we are. Right. Because, well, you know, because everybody thinks the Aryan race is white. It's not. It's what we are, according to what I read earlier. It, it's the 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 fifth incarnation of humanity. So we're all Aryan. This egotistical, war, fear mongering type of, of society that we are, and that the, this as we enter into the golden age is what Jay Larson, you know, said. Said is we, you know, we have to let go of all of that, and we have to now, you know, or or we're, you know, we're we're pretty much setting ourselves up for destruction. We're setting our 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 race, our our race up for destruction, and it can't move forward. And there are only going to be few of us that are going to survive it. The ones that have let go and have, have looked at, you know, okay, well, you know what, I'll surrender to it. I'll raise my hand up to it and say, you know what, you're right. And, and that's what I'm trying to do now with the show. I want, I want to do that with this show. I want to, that's the message I want to communicate to everybody is that, you know what, we have to look within ourselves. We have to really understand ourselves, let go of our, of our thoughts of, of fear, let go of our thoughts of the ego, Let's, let's kind of focus on how can we help ourselves and how can we help humanity move forward into this new age, you know? And I don't like to say new age because people put it to the new age movement, but, you know, we are entering a new age. I mean, even Jesus talked about a new age, a new time. Well, and some people can also claim that the new age is just another term for the new world order. Well, that's another thing. Yeah, that's another. Well, yeah, well, we see it on the dollar bill, but we, we you know, uh, that's another thing. You know, we, and we talked about this on Friday or on Saturday night show on Truth Frequency, was that you know, Fox News. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Fox News actually said said to the Olympic team, the American Olympic team, that you know, you guys are spearheading the new world order. You guys oh, are, right. you know, what the hell? You know, why is Fox News saying? You are the new world order. You know well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? You know, maybe maybe we are heading into the new world order. Maybe there's maybe there's nothing that can stop the new world order. Leo Zagami has talked about it. You know, he says, "Come 2013, that's it. Seven years of tribulations. Seven years we are going to the new new world order. You better embrace it or not." And well, you, you know, know, I I always wondered how in our modern day and. I, I would consider us more educated than, say, people that were back, you know, a couple hundred years ago when they used to talk about accepting the mark of the beast. And I wondered, how could they fool the people? How could they fool them into accepting this mark and then they're not even knowing it? And you talked about this on your show, too, that if uh, you accept this chip, that would be the mark of the beast. And then it's like, well, if people know this is the mark of the beast, they wouldn't take it. But because we're in such hard times and they're making everybody poor, you yep. right away you say, okay, you take the chip, we're going to give you a hundred grand. Right. Suddenly it becomes, my goodness, you know, I, I, I guess I'll take it. Mm hmm And and maybe that's the whole reason why the world's in a big bunch of crap right now with with uh, money and finances and everything is to make us all poor, so that when when the time comes, that uh, more of us would be willing to do that. Oh yeah, you know, and and you know, I I. I don't know if, if, if the, uh, you know, it, some have said that the mark itself would be a mark, like a physical mark on our bodies. And then some people say that the RFID chip will be the mark of the beast. I don't know. You know, I, I, I all I know is, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, Kevin and I have both been in the military, so we might even have the RFID chip already rolling around <laughs> in us already. Right. You know, and, and, and to me that sounds logical because of all the attacks that I've had, I mean, and, and people have been able to find me, you know, it, it's not being conspiracy or anything like that. I mean, there's just no, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, I, I'm just, I, you know, it's just like my dog, he's RFID'd, you know. I, I did that. I, I, I put the RFID in my dog, and maybe that was a stupid 
thing for me to do. But at least, I, you know, one of the ways I got him back was that he had that chip in there, and thank God I, that I put it in there. I got him back, you know? And Wait, uh, they were able to look at cell phone? Yeah, our did cell phones have, your... have... Passports! Passports! The brand new passports all have... Uh, I love this. Donnie is a sad commentator for the New World Order. Somebody in the chat room said that. Good God. I mean, people, really? Really? I mean, just like Seth Meyers. Really? <laughs> you know, really? I'm a commentator for the New World Order? Yeah, bring it on, brothers. Take the RFID. You're, you're not saying anything that nobody hasn't heard before. I mean, I come know. on. I mean, it's hilarious. It's, it, it's, it's so funny. It's, it's, it's so... Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely hilarious, and yes, we are taking calls, if you want to, uh, oh, actually, I see somebody's right here, uh, let's bring them on, Sleepy Salsa, <laughs> welcome to the show. Well, hey, thank you for bringing me on. No, no problem, no, no we got about a half hour left, so might as well bring on more the merrier, that's what I always say. <laughs> what is, what's going on, where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm from the, uh, formerly great state of Texas, and huh? I was overhearing you talking about RFID chips, and it really kind of started turning the gears in my head, which actually isn't that hard since I try to think as quickly as I can, or at least think faster than my mouth can move. And uh, I pretty much started thinking about privacy. And it was interesting. You know, I recently read a book about PGP, Pretty Good Privacy, if you've ever heard of it. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, it's basically a type of email uh, encryption program that was invented during the 90s by Phil Zimmerman. Uh, it, it, just very quick uh, explanation. When you send an email, uh, it's kind of like sending a postcard. You know, third parties can read not only uh, the sender, the receiver, the subject line, but also the contents of the message. It's, it's a postcard. Uh, uh -huh. When you encrypt email, it's like putting your email inside of an envelope. You know, you can, a third party interceptors can still tell the sender, the receiver, and in the case of email, also the subject line, but they can't tell the contents of the message because it's in an envelope, and that's what encryption can provide. And mm -hmm. what made PGP so unique was it combined the aspects of both private and public uh, key cryptography in an open source manner so that pretty much it's available to uh, uh, the masses. What's unfortunate is, you know, I was going around, uh, I think it was last week, on another, uh, I think, like, Patriot talk radio thing on BTR, and yep. I started mentioning about PGP, and it was weird. The reaction I was getting was, like, this kind of shaky, uh, shaky reaction about, oh, well, we're above board. We're not trying to hide anything. You know, we have... You know, we don't want to look guilty to the government. That was that was one, what one person oh, said. God. I, was, yeah. I was just like, wait a minute. You guys are constitutionalists, right? And they said, yes. Uh, Fourth Amendment? Uh, I don't know. And just Or, you know, hey, how about natural law? Or, you know, privacy is kind of important, since, like, in a lot of ways. <laughs> right. So let's, I mean, why not do something small? I mean, I'm not asking you guys to use uh, mail drops. I'm not asking you guys to, you know, uh, acquire... Uh, you know, alternate legal identities. I'm not asking you guys to do, I'm saying like use a email encryption program. Is that, or at least learn how to use it. Is that really that difficult? But apparently it seems so. So I kind of wanted to kind of add that on to the uh, sure. RFID aspect. Well, you know, that is one of the downfalls that he's talking about with privacy because that's why they're trying to destroy the United States Postal Service because it is still you have to go through a lot of measures in order to open up somebody's mail. But the right. minute that you use UPS or any other yep. type of service, yep. Yep. you are giving your property to a second party to Please. deliver it, and they are bounded by law to hand it over to the government if they ask. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the, getting rid of the post office would be the worst thing to happen to the United States, and that's why they're trying to back one, our main post office here in Reno, a beautiful old building, is being shut down, downtown Reno. And I don't know why. Nobody's giving any reason why. Uh, they're saying they just don't have the funds to manage it. And it's like, you know, some, you know, it's in this old architectural building, and it's absolutely beautiful building, and it's so convenient for everybody. And now we've got to, like, drive, you know, 
six, seven miles away just to get to a main post office. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, it's it, we're seeing this happen to a lot of the post offices all throughout the country. Even the downtown St. Paul one, Kevin, is no yeah. longer. That one's gone. Uh, that closed down sometime this year. I, it closed down after I left. But uh, I know that that's no longer. And that was a beautiful building. Uh, you know, and now they're going to make it into, you know, whatever they want to make it into. Uh, but it's a super mall. Yeah, a super mall or whatever they want to do. But, you know, you know, I, I the, 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 you know, the postmen are the last, I think they're the great American heroes. They are. They still are. I mean, see, I love, I love seeing the postman show up with his bag and he's walking with the post, you know, and he delivers his mail. I think that's, that, that's a, that is, that is an honorable job. That's an honorable job. That's so the I romanticism think it, of our past. Too. Yeah, you know, it, you know, I remember the movie The The Postman with Kevin Costner. Remember that? <laughs> love that movie. Love that movie. You know, especially when uh, Tom Petty was in it. You, know, you got to love any movie that Tom Petty's in. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it you would not be in favor of what Lysander Spooner did uh, a while back when he was trying to compete with the uh, USPS with his own uh, private uh, no. service then. No. I, I think it's it's the, it, the uh, it's one of the oldest you know American jobs you know that there is, and I think it's it's an honorable job, and it's it's it is what it's it's a part of what makes America America. You know the 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 the, the, the U.S. Post Office is you know, and they're trying to destroy it. The, our own government is trying to destroy one of the founding things that made our our. United States work. I mean, if it wasn't for the post office, we would have never been where we got today. No way. Well, to be fair, you know, under Article One, Section Eight, it does say that the Congress has the purview. The power. The Congress shall have the power to uh, to establish post offices and post roads. So, you know, from the constitutionalist argument, the USPS is totally, you know, thumbs up. All, you know, okay. Uh, so you can thank Hamilton and the rest of the Federalists for that. Uh, oh, right. But it, well, it's interesting though. Uh, but then you have then it's kind of, if you go back to Spooner, uh, you know Spooner proved, albeit in a kind of limited way, because there wasn't a way of like field testing it more at the time, because no one else was willing to have their own competing, you know, private mail carriers, uh, which is what they're now known as uh, PMCs. Uh, you know, Spooner did prove that you could, in his own little way, that you could lower the cost for shipping. But unfortunately, in any good experiment, uh, I'm a scientist, so I'm kind of big on that. Uh, it has to be repeatable, and unfortunately, there really wasn't a chance for that to be really repeatable again, because the monopolistic USPS then reasserted itself, and then, of course, no one gave it a second thought for two reasons. One, the mainline public at that time, it's like, it's mail, it's like, fuck it, you know, they needed it to happen. And the second reason was because the constitutionalists back then were saying Article 1, Section 8. So, of course, you know, Spooner didn't really have much of a place to go. So, you, you just said you're a scientist. What What is your uh, field of research? Oh, political science, actually. Oh, so political this, science, kind of, awesome. <laughs> well, so, yeah, this kind of this stuff's kind of my bread and butter, but yeah, you know, yeah. I've gone on. I've had to also study a lot of economics, too, because that kind of kept creeping up, you know, especially when you're dealing, when I'm dealing with austerity or, uh, or you know, fractional reserve lending or, or whatever. And, oh, by the way, the Keynesian econ uh, economists don't like to talk about the Federal Reserve. Uh, that was, uh, I remember that back in college. Uh, <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me ask you this, uh, and, and so do you, do you think that we're going to get a fair audit? Oh, absolutely not! It's a total and utter distraction. And if you right. give me and if you give me the floor, I could explain briefly why. No, go right ahead. Okay. This is not an attack against Ron Paul. Ron Paul is fine. Ron Paul's rhetoric is cool. We all like Ron Paul to one degree or another. Me personally, I don't think this whole notion of getting him elected is a good idea. I said that back in 2008. Nobody cared. But otherwise, his ideas about liberty are actually pretty good for the most part. Now let's get to the method. Okay, the uh, idea either end the Fed, which is preferable, abolish it completely, right. um, or at the very least, let's do an incremental step and at least order to get through their books, and then hopefully maybe that will provide the proof and persuade enough people to abolish the Fed. Okay, uh, here's the problem. Um, it necessarily requires the Congress who created the Fed 
to what? Audit the monster from Jekyll Island that they themselves ultimately created. I mean, I, I know the history of Jekyll Island. Let's not, let's not get into that. But at the end right. of the day, the Senate, during that Christmas, I mean, again, anyone who knows the history can go back. The Congress was, and the Senate specifically, made it happen at the end of the day, at that last linchpin. It was the one thing the bankers couldn't do. So now, we're, we're with our current situation, the Congress now, granted, different people, because all the people from 1913 are pretty much dead, or for the most part, uh, they're somehow going to turn against the Federal Reserve by demanding an audit. How's that going to work? I mean, they're all dependent on this fractionally reserved fiat receipt funny money, as all do we because of lenders' tender statutes. We're forced to accept it in payment of debt. Uh, so I just don't see, even if, even if, 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 there was a way of persuading and having bipartisan support to push this through. I mean, look, this has already happened twice now, where the House, where the House of Representatives did have bipartisan support overwhelmingly, and the Senate killed it. Well, then you have to ask, who's the Senate really working for? Why would they have an incentive to kill it? And that's kind of another problem, isn't it, too? Because instead of us being responsible and creating alternative currency, investing in precious metals, and any other methods we can think of, which we are responsible for, and responsibility is a key libertarian tenant, mm -hmm. instead, we are led by various alternative media pundits, some of whom are patriot rock stars, other ones are useful idiots, but probably some are probably genuine, regardless of where they're coming from, they are fallaciously saying that this method of securing our liberties by auditing the Fed is going to work, when, if you really look at it, it has, we have no effect whatsoever. We can shout, we can yell, we can write to our congressman a method that itself doesn't work, and I've written about it. We can do all these other things, we can vote, but again, doesn't work. But whatever it is, at the end of the day, auditing the Fed, that method, who is in power to make it happen, and ultimately, at the end of the day, comes down to the U.S. Senate? You, me, and the guy down the street have absolutely zero control over that. What we do have control over is voting in ballots, creating alternative currencies, and investing in precious metals. And frankly, anything else anybody else comes up that's actually a method that will actually work, even well, if it's a temporary expedient. Isn't there, there's, uh, what, what was it, is it Utah that is now using its own currency in some, in some there's areas? Various, there's various areas around the country with alternative currencies like Ithaca Hours and uh, the Piedmont Berkshires. Okay. Yeah, I remember reading about that, and I and I think you know, I, I, if anything was to happen, I mean, we're going to probably have to go back to that grassroots type of thinking. Uh, is is creating some either a, a bartering system or a alternative type of currency to buy and purchase goods? I mean, that I think we could go, we could grow because right now we're just making stuff out of thin air, and it's it makes no sense at all. I mean, we. Right. I mean, so it really makes relying, no sense. Right. So instead of relying on a messiah here, which unfortunately Ron Paul has not Ron Paul the symbol, not Ron Paul the man. Ron right. Paul the symbol, the symbol. has been yep. has been manufactured into being. Whether if you want to go controlled opposition route, fine. Or you want to say be from the fantasies of people who want a guy on a white horse to come in and solve all their problems and do all their fighting for them, which is the attitude of children and not responsible adults, then. I mean, why why wait on the grassroots? There's no reason. I mean, to their credit, the propertarian anarchists have some of the, been the biggest advocates for Bitcoin, which is a completely different type of alternative currency that technically is international. It's still experimental, but I mean, they've even got their own stock market now for Bitcoin. I just found out about really? it. Really? Yeah, they just started about uh, two or three weeks ago, and if you give me a chance, I'll post it in the uh, chat room. But... Probably. Yeah, but it, the, the point is that, you know, it makes no sense, zero sense. It is completely irrational to wait or, or hope. Remember, hope and change, change and hope, changing for the hope and hoping for the change, right? Okay, uh, you know, Clinton did the same thing, as did Bush Sr. and the rest of the gaggle of older well, dribbles were pointing. In, in Clinton's defense, I did live a very good lifestyle in the 90s. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what, what that means. I don't know about you guys, but I, I lived a really good life in the 90s. 
Ah, but what does that do to Clinton or to free market forces? I beg to question uh, you. That's true. That That's very true. I mean, I was in my 20s, so, you know, I really, I you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I give it, I don't know. But. So the point. So the point is, we have options. We have realistic options. Some of them are experimental, like Bitcoin. Other ones are things that reliably work. Uh, and, and so there's. And look, either Ron Paul and his little audit the Fed thing will work or it won't. But you, me, and the guy down the street have zero, no. zero, no zero fan. effect. Over so why why worry and fret and go to Infowars and Prison Plan all these and all these other alternative media sites and Dredge Report and the rest of them and worry and uh, this is a distraction. I'm sorry. I hate to say that. That's, uh, that's exactly what I've said about Benjamin Fulford, the White Hat Society, all of this stuff, all of these promises. You know the Drake thing. You know that oh we're going to get the cabal, we're going to arrest all these bankers. It's all a distraction. It's all to get us confused on this whole monetary system. And there was an article written by Gary Hunt that's entitled Divide and Conquer. And it was an ex and I posted in the chat room. It is an extremely good analysis of great typology for examining how grassroots activists in these United States are, uh, are so single issued on some things that they get, they experience tunnel vision and, and there's not like a cohesive strategy of any kind to, as the Tea Partiers, with our country back. Just a quick sample. Uh, we were talking about auditing and editing the Fed. That mm -hmm. is actually on this list for very good reasons. Other such examples uh, would be like 9-11 Truth, uh, the birthers, um, you know, that so-called Continental Congress 09, which should be tackled another time because that was a complete far farce and I should know uh, for a lot of other reasons. Uh, people pop pontificating about FEMA camps. Like, look, a, a quick, quick, quick aside about that. If you are a prisoner in the American prison system, which has the highest, incarcer highest incarceration right, right, right. rate in the yep. world, mm -hmm. ask any prisoner in the general mainline prison population, are you worried about being put into a FEMA camp? Please keep in mind that beatings, overall corruption, and rape with men happens really normally in, norm in prison. Right. So are they really worried about a FEMA camp? I would kind of guess... No. No. Uh, other things, focusing on CPS. Yes, CPS does bad things, but it's like, eh, it's an administrative agency, it's a bureaucracy, it's, it's an effect. So basically this entire list is a list of effects, but it's not really focusing so much on the cause. And even the few things in here which would be a cause, like the Federal Reserve, you can't tackle it directly because the only thing that can stop it is another entity, the Congress, which itself is inimical to the liberties of the American population. It is an enemy entity which is trying to uh, steal, enslave, and murder us all. And this is not some, you know, you know, fancy rhetoric. Go read their documents. I mean, I mean, a lot of you guys know about this, which is great. But this is it. They are an enemy entity, just like the other administrative agencies and the al uh, alphabet soup boys and the rest of them. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. So what we do is well, have a plan. And well, I, 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 I don't mean to, uh, to break in, but we've only got about nine minutes left in the show. What I'd like to do, uh, and what's your name, by the way? I see you down at Sleepy Salsa, though. What is your true name? Uh, Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, I do a special edition on the Truth Frequency Radio Network on Saturday evenings. I would love to invite you on to that show, and we could do a two-hour segment on this. Would you? Would you be interested in doing that with me? Uh, yes, that would be uh, perfectly fine. I should what be available I, at that time. Well, what I'd like to do it wouldn't be this Saturday. I've got to guess this Saturday, uh, but we could set something up. I'll what uh, what I'll do is I'll put my email in the chat room, and just email me, and we'll set up a, we'll set up a time. For you, for you to come back, and we'll do a special edition because uh, I think this is very important information. This is very, very important. It seems like you're you're really on the ball on this. I'm not so head up on all of that, and I think you sound very much on the ball on this. So I would love to invite you on to a special edition. We'll promote it and definitely uh, get get this information out. Well, one thing, Donnie, that I'd yeah. like to add to what he's saying is he's sure. right on the mark for distraction. Yes. Oh yeah, I, it's 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 perfectly, uh, you know, it's it's. 
everything that I have seen as far as Fulford is concerned, as far as Ron Paul is concerned, as far as the, the Fed is concerned, as far as in the, this whole cabal thing is concerned, anything to do with the bankers, we are going into a one world currency. We are going into a new world order. I know it's going to happen. It is on its way. I mean, I don't think there's any way of stopping it. And so how do we live within those parallels? You know what? What? What is going? You know, if this, if for some reason this brown, this brown dwarf, the second son, because nobody knows what this is going to do as we approach the December twenty first, twenty second into March of two thousand thirteen, the governments are bracing for something to happen, catastrophic or whatever, but they don't know. The remote viewers have no idea what's going to happen, but they already have everything set for them to bring in a new world order. And that includes this currency and this distraction that's going on. So I think the more information that we can get out to the public, and especially having guys like you uh, on the show, uh, and I don't know, I just put my email in there, so please email me. Uh, did you get that? Yes, okay. I got it. it it's fine. I'll, I'll handle that later. Yeah. Yeah, shoot me an email. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me on the show tonight. I got to do some uh, closing things out here, but uh, uh, yeah, please email me, and we'll we'll definitely get in tonight. I want to read this divide and conquer thing. I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight on Thirty Two Degrees of Insanity. Uh, Larry, thanks for coming in. Uh, Kevin, you know, any final thoughts as we leave? Um, just do your best to get rid of the fear and hang on to the love. And if you can't love everybody, at least respect them. Oh, it's a great words of wisdom. I mean, I think we need to respect everybody. You know, there's just so much, there's just so much hate in this world. You know, everybody's hating on everybody. And, and you know, it's not just me, you know, I mean, even though I get hated on left and right, uh, if, just because I have a radio show and I have a, a little stupid YouTube channel. Uh, but you know what? We need to start loving everybody because if we, if we, if, if we don't, we are going to head down this catastrophic timeline. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it really makes me sad to think that, you know, but maybe the Hopis and maybe the, uh, the, the Mayans were right, you know, that this is something that we have to do to change. And uh, we have to experience this within our soul, this conflict within our soul before we can change. I think that's why everybody's experiencing it right now uh, deeply. I think everybody is in a deep, deep soul. And I think that's why everybody's questioning everybody else and what everybody's motives are, uh, because everybody's in question right now. You know, like just like Buddha says, question everything, including me. Nicely said. Nicely said. All right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Kevin, for uh, joining me. Um, I will talk to you soon. Of course, uh, this Wednesday night. Guys, we'll be back on the air here uh, for freedomizerradio.com. I'll be back on the air uh, 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time going all the way till midnight. Uh, I haven't decided on a guest yet. I think I'm going to uh, probably go deeper into what I wanted to do tonight. Uh, and, of course, we went off on a tangent in regards to, and I might even bring Sleepy Salsa back on Wednesday night's show. Uh, well, him and I are going to talk via email because uh, I think it's got some very in interesting information that we need to really touch on. We haven't really touched on that part of things here on 32 Degrees of Insanity, and that is another insane part of things because we've got a cabal out there that thinks they run the whole show. And maybe there's a way that they're going to trick us into thinking they still can. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to really contemplate on that. But on the other hand, are we all controlled, and is this is some sort of matrix that we're in? According to Drake now, I don't know if everybody's heard this new one, but Drake is going to be joining Alfred Weber, and now I guess Drake is supposed to be Neo for the Matrix, or something to that extent. So I'll be interesting to find out what new Drake's uh, philosophies are as well, because he was dead wrong on the Cabal, and I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him, but... I'm li I'll listen to him. I'll listen to him. I'll listen to anybody. I'll listen to anybody out there because there's always a bit of truth in everybody's everybody's thought process. Mine, yours, Daleks, Terrells, any of the trolls out there. 
everybody's got a piece of truth within them. And if we all combine it together and we work together, maybe we can actually figure out some harmony for this world. Now, if you're listening to me on my YouTube channel, thanks for listening to this show tonight. We have kind of gone a full wide spectrum on tonight's show. But I, I hope that I have been able to clarify for you all the difference that we are trying to make in regards to the Debiru hoax. And don't allow anybody to twist my words around and to think that I don't believe that there is some sort of incoming dual star that the government knows about and that we should keep our focus on a positive, harmonious timeline. And we'll do those little five-minute sessions every show. And I don't know if I'm going to continue doing my show. I haven't decided yet. I might do a walkabout to find my own spirituality, to find my own self-centeredness. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be the next day. I don't know if it's a month or two months from now. I know you definitely got me until the 17th, at least until the 21st. But just know that I myself, too, need to find my own center. And that I'm not the crutch everybody needs to turn to. That you need to go out there and do your own research and find your own center as well. We love you. I love you. Everybody, let's just get along and stop the hating. That being said, guys, again, remember to join us on Wednesday night, 32 Degrees of Insanity. Of course, our special edition on the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We do that now every Saturday night. We start at 9 o'clock, going to 11 uh, and, of course, this weekend, uh, we are going to have uh, a special guest from Ozark Publishing, uh, a, another author, author from uh, Ozark Publishing. I will tell you more about that on Wednesday night's show, as Chris Gio and I set that up for this weekend. It's going to be a phenomenal show this coming uh, Saturday night on Special Edition of 32 Degrees. And, of course, Wednesday night's show... We'll kind of be figuring that out as well. Be looking for this on YouTube. If you haven't caught this, of course, on the archive, you can join. And make sure that you go to our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash Ursu Adams. We'll see you all on the flip around. Love you all. Thank you so much for listening tonight, and God bless.